Hello and welcome to session number 41 of Outlander's Guide to Ladaria. We won! Hello! Hello! Hi! Hello! No, we're, we're not we're not whispering. Hi. <laughs> Much better. Welcome. So speak from the from your chest. Hello! Welcome! Hello! Hello! Welcome to Hello. Outlander's Guide to Ladaria. <laughs> I see you've made it in one piece. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunate. Okay. Uh, Dennis is not with us, but he will join us soon. Um, uh, at some point in mid-session. So for the time being, we're going to begin. And uh, uh, the summer is in the hands of Austin, we have decided. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Jason. <laughs> I'm cool with it. All right. We'll allow so. it. <coughs> it's after do that I... inspiration, baby. Do I... <laughs> Do I, need to, do I need to stop the music? Yes. Okay. Oh. Oh, a silent recap. I don't oh, it won't be silent. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Our recap begins uh, at uh, at a bar in Simleilan. It's run down. It's nighttime. Everyone's been a bit rowdy, but as the harmonica begins to play, everyone, of course, sits down to listen. As the bard, whom we have previously met, begins to sing a song of, of what happened last session. <laughs> <clears throat> there once was a big blue frog that could talk. His name is Pontifex Vas Dalusalinok. I fought by his side in the wizard tourney. This is the story of he and me. Depressed and dejected, the professor protested and claimed he was not worthy. And when he awoke on the day that we spoke, his small friend seemed quite worried. He said that a Krelko of ruby complexion was hunting the madam and Lee, cause he just found a mask that would aid in the task of killing them and their families. Talix was sent to help Vadra on behest of her father. Azteca gave Pontifex words of wisdom, and this is what Pontifex heard. Forgo the payment if you win the tournament, perhaps there will be a chance. To save your fair prism with these wizards with you, you could get it back. Pontifex smiled and said he would, then promptly left as he put on his hood, and the tournament begins. <gasps> as each man and woman is introduced, with flare and fire they enter, and Pontifex raises his wand in the sky, and sends a rippling explosion through time and space, tearing the eardrums of man, woman, and child, all bleed from their ears, and they are struck with the thunder of death. <coughs> <laughs> and then we recovered and watched in delight as the first challenge at last begun. They went to search for a golden wolf's tooth, and after minutes they were finding none. So the great professor nobly searched in the mind of the mayor of the town. And there he found in the depths of his brain the secrets that were to be found. He went to the river and tried to drown Vadra and <laughs> found the tooth below. Round two. And then they began the puzzle room, not knowing that it would spell doom. Because instead of water that rose, vinegar pulled at the professor's toes. That's when his familiar, a small vulgar imp, threatened my very life. And with my help we made it out in time, and Pontifex drew his knife. He said he would slaughter the brat Aradova, who did this cruel thing to him. And with one fell swipe, he took her life, and she was never seen again. 
What do you mean you were there and that didn't happen? <laughs> well, well, I like the story better this way. Shut up. Sit down. Anyway, the wizard fights began. <laughs> and one by one, he killed every man until his greatest nemesis remained. A woman. <laughs> he fought hard and long, he cast every spell, but in the end, Pontifex fell. But he still got his money, everyone was happy. The end of the tourney, wow, what a journey. Eridova's attorney is coming shortly. I feel kind of woozy, someone get a gurney. <gasps> and then the professor's cat appeared. Applause erupts in the crowd, I heard. And Pontifex got the final word. And now we say goodbye. Goodbye. Wow. Wow. Oh my god. Incredible. We have that on stream and recorded forever. Yeah. <laughs> that is. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. That is amazing. The Austin, uh, the bard is yours now. <laughs> yes, you, you play him. I have all Not the, the notes. Character. He's character. <laughs> it sure wow. would be a shame if something were to happen to Pip in his sleep. Oh, no. <laughs> really bad, huh? Thank you uh, for that recap. Here's your bardic inspiration. Wow. Whoa. But it's a D20 because Roran <laughs> is that powerful. Oh, the forbidden level. <laughs> The Stop forbidden rolling. level 21 bird. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. Done. <laughs> wow. Well, I'm beyond impressed. Yeah. You yeah. should be. Are we By back the way, in liberal the... liberal arts degrees are a sham. Are we back in the high effort part of the recaps? No! No, I'm not ready for that. <laughs> Bring him <them> back. <laughs> <laughs> Is Little that Dennis? Know, Jason, he was apologizing in advance. Dennis! Make recaps great again. <laughs> oh, Dennis, you missed it. I Dennis. hope you watched the stream. Yeah, now, we, now, no, no, now, now we need, you. now we need Austin oh, to redo. No. no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> encore, encore. It's okay. No. Winter will upload it for me. Yes, right? yes, I shall. In Incredible. such a timely manner. <laughs> <laughs> hey, make, making a highlight on Twitch takes, takes less time. It takes less time. It's fast. Have you uploaded the, the episode? No! Here yet? <laughs> Still. <laughs> <laughs> then don't, don't work on it. I didn't even have the session prepared to today in time. It's been like a month. I didn't even prepare today's session in time. I can't. This is too what much. the moved in the time it took. <laughs> ah. Oh no. I must be terrible. Use, you can yeah. use my catchphrase if you want. What's your catchphrase? <laughs> I really should have prepared a session today, huh? <laughs> oh, I thought your catchphrase was, was going to be no. <laughs> that's my catchphrase. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. You're not a no. You're totally a yes and kind of DM. Well, I was a no when I was a player. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh, okay, well, now I have to follow up that excellent recap with an okay session. Um, but <laughs> okay <laughs> is what we yeah. aim for. Setting the bar, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, you can go home. You've already seen the best uh, that, that was going to happen today. So now all you do is just play off the mediocrity as a joke and then it's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like on purpose, which makes it smart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Because if, you know, <clears throat> the session was that hype, then it would just be kind of like repetitive, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Okay. Friends. Um, <clears throat> In the evening. <clears throat> okay, okay, boys, I got it. <clears throat> In the evening, uh, at the end of the tournament, uh, uh, celebrations followed. All and it took place all over the city of Simlielon, uh, with each of you um, either joining in or avoiding them uh, at, at your own leisure, as you as you desire. Um, probably a few too many uh, drinks later. Uh, you ultimately end up meeting one another once again. Um, 
you are ready to plan for your upcoming journey. I know you have already done all the shopping and such, and I want to just verify with, with all of you that you are um, planning to leave tomorrow in game. I think, I think so. so, yeah. I yeah. So. I do think that um, after the tournament thing and he got some the winnings, some some money, uh, Pontifex is going to go and try to uh, to get one of the a replacement fifty gold diamond or whatever. Now that he doesn't have his wand, then I needed to cast my spell again. Uh, for a chromatic orb, so okay. I'll, I'll figure he'll probably go to his wizard college or something and try to find one there. Ah, sure, yeah, yeah. Let's let's just get that out of the way. You can get one that's cool. worth. You want fifty gold? Is that right? Yeah, it has to be a diamond okay. worth at least yeah. fifty gold. It is worth fifty, but you can get it for thirty-five. Dope. Yeah, it is. It is correct <clears throat> size. Uh, Brooke, it. Uh, Turns out that, of course, Leo had stayed um, in uh, Simlielon uh, long enough to actually watch the tournament. So he was in the crowd um, when when it was taking place. He just was seated kind of far away from you. But two of you end up meeting up uh, after the tournament. And uh, um, he, he agrees to see you in the dragon wagon because he understands that for some reason you have an issue with the with the inn he's staying at. Um, <laughs> but he's, uh, he's here to, to say farewell. He knows you'll be leaving and he will also be leaving the colony soon. Is there anything <laughs> you want to say to him? Mm. Wait, first off. Didn't... Jason, did you want to ask him something? Did you want to talk to him, or is that not of matter anymore? Well, correct. Just I, wasn't I wasn't thinking about this. Um, I feel like. Talix might have uh, tried to meet up with him and chat, chat with him, but mostly he probably would have asked about the story that he kind of already told you. Um, I don't know if there's much like new to dig into, really. Okay. Okay, we can say that that, that happens uh, then, perhaps on on this very evening, um, when when Brooke meets up with Leo, he finally takes you along, uh, and, and, and this time you're, you're free and you're available for it. And uh, Leo has... Do, does not keep what happened to him secret. In fact, uh, like, on, on the contrary, he, you know, he uses his own, his own tail in the same manner uh, that... Uh, um, sorry, in the same manner... Crap, I forgot his name. Sorry, the... Uh, Baryanthar! <laughs> In the same way the Baryanthar tells of uh, uh, his own demise and how he saw the, the gods uh, and made friends with the with a fairy dragon uh, during the brief time when he was gone. Um, Leo similarly tells the story of how his own life ended and then was returned to him as uh, a testament to the... The, the power and the generosity of the gods, of course. He's not preachy about it. Uh, he's, he's just this, like, calm uh, and patient personality, and he tells his own story without, uh, um, like, without making the moral explicit. He just figures it speaks for itself. So, if I remember right, he was uh, resurrected by a cleric of the raven, but himself is a cleric of the snake? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was resurrected by the woman who would uh, afterwards uh, go on to become the arch cleric of the raven. Um, mm -hmm. And Leo himself eventually found his own purpose uh, uh, serving the snake. The god of life. So what's it like for you, being an outsider? Have you found an, a way to fit in? 
me as a furball, you mean? Yeah. I don't need to fit in. I don't well, need. Of course. Uh, really, though, I don't. I don't desire it. I'm just here to cure diseases and help those in need. My own actions speak for themselves. You, uh, uh, I, have you I understand seen? it's probably not what you wanted to hear, but I do try to forget all the bad things that the war caused or was caused by. I try not to think of race too much. Don't think of Jade Alliance and Moon Watch. Those are, those are names we could do without. Have you seen the snake yourself? Seen, uh, not quite, but I do hear his voice at night when I sleep. When you dream. He guides me. He gives me magic. He doesn't order me around. He, he manifests himself whenever I am at a loss whenever I really need someone's guidance. And he shares his wisdom. It, uh, it must be nice to have that companion. Leo pauses for a moment and glances at uh, your uh, amulet that Alex is wearing around his neck. And he says, Do you also aim to hear the voice of the gods? It'd just be nice to have that reassurance that I'm on the right path. Well... And of course, who wouldn't want to hear from the gods, I mean? <laughs> well, if that is what you truly desire with all your heart, then I'm... I'm sure the gods will answer. Hmm. When the time is right, I suppose. When the time is right. Well, safe travels. I know uh, Brooke probably has a lot to say to you right now, so. <clears throat> um, safe travels to you as well. By any chance, have you met Bari and Thar here? Do you know his whereabouts right now? Have I met him? I, I have not. I've seen him, never hmm. spoken to him. Well, that's fine. I, uh... I have a question to ask him. Um, so, I'll let you get back to your business, and, uh... Until we meet again. It was a pleasure meeting you. Farewell. Welcome when, did you. when did you say you were leaving, Leo? Ah, probably in two or three days. I do have the room booked for a couple more, so I might as well get some use out of it. Alright. Well, <clears throat> if you don't mind, I would just follow you on your way back to your tavern. And we can have a chat and then we'll meet again. To my tavern. Are you sure? Uh, yeah, I guess. For this <laughs> one. Okay. 
Come with me. Do you guys need me for anything? And I turn to the group, the group, or am I free to go for tonight? You can go. Your time is short. Spend it. All right. Don't plan anything crazy. All right, and I can leave with Leo. <laughs> okay. Uh, Leo's going to take you to the to the goat boat. Um. I think we need. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Do you mind if I come in? I do have. In a few room. more questions. Yeah. I mean, just to talk between each other. <laughs> uh, must be important. Yeah, sure, come in. It's, uh, sorry, it's a mess. Fine. I remember how you were. So it can't yeah. be worse than then, right? I haven't gotten any better in all these years. It's okay, you weren't the only one. I mean, it's an inn. They, 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 they clean up. You know, for me. That is true. And at least in the dragon wagon, they do that quite well. Can only recommend. <laughs> but Rook, it's more expensive. Mm. Maybe if you're the next time in town and see the barkeep, Kalu, if you mention my name, maybe you'll get a discount. No promises, but... Oh, your buddies! Okay, yeah, well, sure. I might just take advantage of that. And he'll, like, Leo will close the door behind you. So, uh, what do you need? Uh, I wish I could just say goodbye, but I do actually have a request from you. Oh? And you don't have to do it, but I would like you to listen at least and hear it out. And then just decide what you want to do. Well, listen, I can definitely do that. Okay. Uh, how do you like the group? I'm with nice people. Your friends? Good feeling? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, are you worried that, I, that I'm jealous? Because no, I was really. joking when I was... <laughs> talking about how you made new friends over us. I mean, maybe one day when the others come together over here, if they ever decide to, we can all have a drink together. I'm pretty sure you have, <laughs> you would get along. What about They're weird, best? but so were we. Um, well, you've met the little one, right? Pip? Pip? Yeah. You said you were going to Luda next? I'm planning to. Okay. Um, so, I do have a request that might require you to do some of our old work. Okay, nothing bad, obviously, no killing and wolf, but... Yeah, he, de he definitely had a bit of a, like, a worried expression as soon as he said old work. Yeah, I mean more of like gathering potential information. You have one of these willpoint cards, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, then we can at least exchange information on that. Um, so there's actually a lot to this kid, right? And I do tell him what I know about Pip, um, mainly about how he has this noose on, around his neck and with the knots and what I've seen of his granny so far. Ooh, okay. And basically that he has a request to search for certain ingredients. And after, otherwise, I also tell him what happened when we weren't fast enough for the ingredients. And then at the end of that explanation. So, I don't expect you to do anything, right? But since you're around the area, and if you have a map, I can show you where I assume she is, like around there. If you could get like 
some information on whoever the grandma is and what she really wants to do without endangering yourself. I do have a feeling that there is a time when we will have to meet her and tell me I'm wrong, but what she is doing to Pip is not right. And I'm Leo. a bit scared that that could potentially escalate. Leo listens to the full story without uh, interrupting, um, paying close attention, never really looking away from you as you speak. Um, and at, at the end of it, he, he simply asks, Is this all true? N nothing exaggerated. It, it, it's actually... Ah, uh, it's... It's difficult to believe. If I hadn't seen it with my own eyes... I wouldn't believe it either, but... I've seen that kid nearly die because of... When he tried to remove that noose. Right? So... Something must be true, and we gathered those ingredients and then put them in this bag and then they disappeared and he got like a new list like that's a pretty elaborate life for like a 12 year old what exactly do you want me to do figure out who that woman is and if you can get any information what could help me convince her convince her to let us go Right? Gives these people who are good talkers like arguments. Or if it comes to worse, anything that I can use in, to my advantage. That would help. <sighs> okay. I'll... I'll look into this. Perhaps I... Perhaps I can have a word with her find some compromise. I'll let you know I what I find. I don't know if you should talk to her. Because someone can do all that. She seems to be really strong. <laughs> and uh, I don't Ruka, want I, you to get hurt either. Talking is what I, what I do now. I, I speak with people. I learn about their problems, their plights, and I help them out. Look, I'll I'll be careful, okay? And uh, w what are these ingre ingredients? Maybe maybe I can hasten the process if that's what it takes. If I find any, I could send them your way um i i don't know the list that is me saying <laughs> off the top of my head but uh, towards leo i haven't told any of them about this talk i will do tell some of them but uh, He does like her, or at least believes that he likes her. So I'm not sure how he would take take it if I told him what I just told you to do. So if you have like a way of sending me ingredients without it being like obvious <laughs> that I sent someone <laughs> looking for them and told them about this. Sure, here here's the list. And <laughs> What do I name the poem? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you'd you'd remember it. You'd remember the basics. It's been shared with the group previously. Sure. And I'll share what's in the poem. Cryptic. Okay. I, I am not that good with figuring this stuff out. So. <laughs> 
You'll do with that what you can. Just promise me not to die again, okay? That is the first priority. <laughs> I promise. Of course. Now go be with, go be with your friends. Alright. Good luck! And he stands up and gives him a big hug. He hugs you first. Uh. Alright, then I'll give in to the hug. And then he turns around, opens the door, and goes back to the inn. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um... We can move on to the following day, then. The first thing... Um, at uh, breakfast time, um, that, that awaits you is a small package that Kailu makes sure that reaches your group's hands. Uh, <laughs> rumor right after, rumor right after. <laughs> um, uh, it's a small package that seems to contain something uh, solid uh, that you can feel. You can feel under your fingers. Uh, it, it is uh, uh, Brook. You recognize uh, Casimir's handwriting. Uh, although it is, this small package is not uh, uh, it's not meant for you, but it is for Pip and Tekka. Hello? Oh, I was muted, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, searching uh, for... I thought maybe Pip or I was Tekka searching would for the music, up. yeah. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, is, is everyone there, or is it just me? It, it, it's it's all of you, you're all together. Okay, <laughs> and I'll just take the package and say... Did you... What? Oh, there it is. This is from Casimir, and it's for you, Tekka, and for you, Pip? Mm. Is there something I don't know? Mm. I don't know of this. Well, it's for you. Maybe it's a bill. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. And Tech will just kind of grab it out of Brooke's hand and start opening it. Okay. Uh, this package itself is separated into two smaller ones. Uh, one that is uh, uh, th that bears your name and one that bears Pip's. Pip, this is yours. They are small enough that th each of them would fit in the palm of your hand. It's very tightly uh, closed. And overall, it seems like the object, that, the object that's inside, uh, for both of them, it's pretty small. Pip opens it. Uh, Pip, you like make a little wish before before you open it, uh, and uh, your wish is granted as there is yes. a rock inside uh, of your of your package. And there is a small note uh, from Casimir that simply that simply says, "Sorry for letting you down, kid." Oh, now I feel bad. But rock. <laughs> What's um, it look like? This is this is like those rocks that you have bought uh, uh, the other day at the market. The kinds that are like very sparkly and partially see through, very shiny uh, and expensive. Uh, it's it's cut <clears throat> in the same way that like diamonds are, but it's more it's well not quite. Uh, I don't know the word for it. Uh, it's oh crap. Uh, it's kind of flat, so that if you hold it up and you try to to look through it, uh, it, it it's oval sh uh, like oval shaped, uh, and you can see from one end to the other because on, on those two sides it's completely flat. 
Huh. And it's clear? No color to it? Uh, it's clear, yes. <clears throat> wow. Where'd you get, Tekka? I do not know. I don't remember mentioning anything. And Tekka will open package. Okay. Um, te the letter that Casimir has uh, for Tekka simply says, please, please keep those idiots alive. Thank you. Um, you two have received uh, a, a rock, although yours is smaller and it is um, at the top of, a, of an otherwise ordinary looking ring, just uh, simply made of metal and uh, um, it looks like it would fit uh, on your index finger of either hand. I don't understand. Oh! Tekka, you got a rock, too! And you got it on a carrier. <laughs> Brooke, is this familiar to you? Do phantoms wear these? What is it again? Uh, it's a ring with a small gemstone on, on top of it. Um, and while it is not uh, a an object that is specifically, like, off phantoms it is something you've seen casimir wear before and you know that just like the belt he has given to you uh the ring is one of the many tricks that he had up his sleeve mm. actually i it's not a phantom specific but i've seen him wear this ring actually before so it's something from him um you see this belt here? And I point at the belt. That's basically a gift of Casimir as well. And it had some magical attributes. I am not sure what that ring does, but Pontifex wants to take a look at it, or is there like a proper description somewhere? Maybe he thinks you'll need it. <laughs> you guys check like the back with the letters. There isn't a, a description. <laughs> Inside the ring, <laughs> he, he failed to he failed to ship in a the user manual. There's also a small chance that he was just flexing the ring on me, and it actually does nothing. So. <laughs> <laughs> just be aware of that, but it is something of him. So it is a gift, so I will wear it. I don't understand his reasons. He's a good guy. And now I am in his debt. I mean, he helped us. Uh, we helped him. He helped us. We gave him some money. <laughs> I would say we're even. Listen, it's a gift. Enjoy it. I will not forget this. <laughs> uh, yeah, Tega will put it on his left index finger. Okay. Aww. Pip holds up his hand where he has the iron ring on his left index finger. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So what now? Now one of you rolls a d100. <gasps> you you do it. You have better luck than everyone. Oh, uh, okay. Putting pressure. Oh, oh never mind. Oh. <laughs> I already had it loaded. So. So my friends. Um, this, this was guaranteed because you guys were like 99 out of 100, so it, it, you were going to get something. Um, now this 
Uh, here is a little like hype information. Uh, I have a second deck of rumor cards, uh, and uh, those are all new ones, and they are all cards that uh, uh, you might find in your journey beyond the Zasberg Peninsula. So the rumors are, are different and they're more like, you know, relevant for, for those areas. Uh, so whatever you don't get from this, you're not going to see for, for a while. Uh, so shuffle it however much you'd like and we'll see what you get. Whoa. And that stop! Some shuffling. <laughs> wow, Austin. Alright. Just completely disregarding. Someone needs to take one. Who's gonna do it? Uh. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh! We already know why! <laughs> <laughs> do we do we know or... or have we simply heard a different rumor demons uh but in in this particular morning uh you end up overhearing some uh, uh, some conversations between uh, um between plurinan sailors um and of course, in <laughs> in this case, in the case, uh, the word that uh, sailor is used uh, really is limited to like the lakes and the rivers and the close shoreline, just in, in the like no more than a hundred feet away from uh, the continent's edge, uh, like the boat you guys took to actually come to Simlielon, uh, and some of them swear up and down that they have found gold and gemstones at the bottom of the sea. They have found it washed up on the shores. Uh, they even claim that they found magical items. And of course, uh, uh, despite being in the early morning, some of them are already drunk. Well, it's a little difficult to tell what is true and what is exaggerated and what is completely made up. Are you heard this? today what are you Spooky. doing <laughs> <laughs> demons transition demons, demons transitionings <laughs> This is getting concerning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Laser mouth spray. What the heck? <laughs> Just started. Anyway. Once you I leave... I bar last night. Oh! Uh, sure. Early this morning, whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you, you, you can find him. Okay. He's around the town hall. I want to ask him about resurrections and teeth. I was supposed you, to ask. You, you want to request if he can resurrect I, the... I want to ask if it's possible to resurrect something in that, yeah, in that kind of case. Okay, well, what, what, so... What, with you... How far beyond the veil he has reached? <laughs> with you, um, you know, being one of the, one of the heroes of Sim Lielon, um, well, uh, and having already spoken with him, uh, previously, it's, uh, uh a, a while back, you would have never thought that uh, an arch cleric would just be willing to to give you his time uh, freely. But of course, he's he seems actually well. He doesn't really show much happiness, but he he, he seems perfectly fine uh, to speak with you. 
Um, and he, he listens to you telling him that uh, uh, these rubies that you have are parts of a person and asking whether it is possible for him to bring this person back just from these remains. Um, he lets you know that uh, he cannot bring someone back who has been dead for longer than 10 days. And he needs more than just uh, these gemstones that you have. Have you ever heard of someone being brought back after such a long time? Well, there is the example of Vakanath. She was dead for centuries before she came back to us. Is that the same? The same? I do not know. But someone had to give their own life. Is I suppose that... I do not know of anyone who... Anyone else who has returned after... Such a long time. I myself was only gone for... Perhaps a few minutes. There is a hey. limit even to what the gods can do, Talix. Some things cannot be undone. Hmm. I appreciate your time, sir. I apologize for not being able to offer my assistance. Now, I believe there is a task you should uh, uh, get to work on, isn't there? Remember, you only have a few months. We're heading... We're heading out today. And, uh... We might have found a way to greatly expedite our journey. Good. Good news. I'll buy you as much time as I can. I'll write a report as soon as as soon as something new develops. Barion nods and lets it go. Talix is very uh, interested about very interested in Jamiel now. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway. Uh, this morning, as you are all leaving the, the inn, uh, you find uh, a single large red-beaked bird waiting uh, nearby and spotting you and hopping in your direction and squawking. Look around. Is Vajra around? Or... Well, you, you look around and you don't see them, but the bird seems to be um, hopping in place and then a little bit to the side and then turning back to look at you. He hops a bit further away and looks back again. Shall we go? Give our parting words before we make way? Seems we will not be back in a while, so let us follow. Hmm. And as the group begins to uh, follow the red beak, uh, it takes flight. And you have to kind of jog after it. Uh, and you're led to, towards the, the fringes of the colony. Uh, where you find the, the Tarava, who seem to still prefer to uh, 
keep to themselves and uh, spend the uh, the days and nights uh, uh, right uh, uh, on the border of the colony where where things are more quiet and well, there don't seem to be anyone here as fond of uh, of taverns and and inns as uh, as you guys might be. Uh, Vajra, and it's a it's a strange sight to see this Itara Va wearing robes that are clearly of Plurnan make, uh, elven and uh, sparkling and definitely expensive and uh, one size too big on her. And she is holding the wand that she received uh, yesterday and she looks thoughtful to the point where she uh, doesn't notice you approaching until you're uh, almost right beside her. Um, she, she looks up and uh, her grandfather approaches and he, he greets you with a smile. Uh, she looks at him and then speaks for him and says, Hey, uh, how are you doing? We're all doing well. We're about to leave town. Uh, might be a while before you see us again. Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's fine. Um, everybody else uh, is heading to Sentinel's Watch. They're going to settle in and all that. I wish you all the best. You yeah, must well, prepare to protect it. Right. That's what everybody's gonna do. Uh, except for me. I... Well, I mean, I'm thinking about it. But I've been... Offered... To uh, stay... And learn magic. And... Uh, don't get me wrong. Your city's smell, and I never wanted to ever live in one of them but I mean no one else uh, of my people could talk to me about magic you know um, I mean it's I, I, I guess it's would be kind of interesting maybe I think that's great. I think you'd have a lot to learn here, and I think they'd have a lot to learn about you as well. Well, I just wanted to say that it wasn't my idea. Uh, Grandpa said it would be good to do, and I'm just gonna do it for him. I don't care. Hmm. Um, Grandpa says that he as something for you. And you see Pedrak uh, uh, extending a hand towards Talix, not holding out anything, but more like he wants to receive something. Um, Badger looks at, at him and then says, um, you took a petal, right, from one of my flowers? Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, give it to him. So they get out, open his big book, and surely enough, press between the pages will be one of the petals. Mm hmm. Over. Um, Pedrick takes the, the petal and he turns towards the other Itarava. Um, wordlessly, they all gather around and, uh, um, Badra is the first person who begins to sing, and everybody else follows her lead. It's a short song, and it has this this very distinctive melody that kind of gets gets stuck in your head uh, with ease, even though the words are, uh, well, for for anyone else, they're a little difficult to. to uh, they would be a little difficult to to, to replicate, but uh, uh, Talixi are used to the to their sounds, to their languages uh, by now. 
And then at the end of the song, uh, Pedric returns to the battle. And uh, Vajra speaks for him and says, It's yours now. Um, good luck. Or whatever. Um. Okay. Talos decides not to ask the question and just puts it back. Well, and I hope. Well, I hope you can find new ways to grow here. Oh, and here, uh, if you're going to be in a Plurian colony, then I suppose I can give you this. My world point card. Or, well, you can take the information down. Um... Uh, if you find any reason to get one of your own, you can write a letter to us sometime. Uh, Pedric is the one who steps in and uh, copies uh, the, the information of your card on his own paper. But just seems a little a little unsure, but she just nods and says, okay, yeah, um, I'll uh, I'll keep whatever this is. And I'll put Only it to good use. <laughs> Hey, don't think that... No, it doesn't matter. Okay, you have somewhere to be, right? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, all the... Tarara wave as you leave. Um, Vajra eventually doing so once you guys turn around. Um, although your... Your little familiar is, uh, see this. Ah, as you get, as the rest of you have your backs turned on them. Hmm. You begin to cross the city uh, from one end to the other. Uh, have from the western side to the eastern one. You watch as the, uh, the decorations are being taken down and uh, the arena above your heads is slowly being lowered um, at the southern edge of the colony. Uh, you hear a familiar voice, a familiar singing as you cross one of the main plazas. Uh, by now, you have learned... Uh, the name of uh, this half elf man, uh, Roeren, uh, as he's singing about the gods that uh, that you guys know, and you catch like the tail end of uh, uh, this performance he's giving. And this early in the morning, um, very few people are actually stopping and listening. And uh, when your group does, it's it's the most people uh, so far. And he waves, he waves at Pontifex and Talix, who he uh, recognizes, and then he, he seems to also understand who everybody else is. You guys are almost getting used to, to, the, fame, to the fame at this point. It's still a little strange, for, particularly for some of you, but uh, um, he waves at you as if you're all old friends of his. We'll give him a, an awkward little anger twiddle wave back. <laughs> Hello. Is he busking? Is he what? Is he... Is is he doing this to earn money right now? Yes. Does he have like a little thing? Yes, he has a him? hat. Uh, that, All right. Yeah, in front of his feet. Talix will throw in a couple gold while waving enthusiastically. Nope, oh, nope. Oh. <laughs> ah, thank you. Wow, these are gold pieces. Uh, um, got any wow. about the fox? Uh, well, I was I about to sing about uh, Pontifex. I just wrote this incredible song, but... Oh, uh, did you? Can I hear it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think Brooks ever heard you sing. <laughs> don't worry. I can wait. Hold, hold up. Let me go and get Brooke. One, one moment. <laughs> and then we will wait until you sing. <laughs> <laughs> Kept uh, being awfully quiet right now. 
This mic is <laughs> staying muted. <laughs> Uh, no, but he gives a very nice performance about about Pontifex's uh, uh, actions in the tournament. Uh, somehow he seems to know a few things about you guys that you're pretty sure you haven't shared with him. Uh, and a couple of things, uh, a couple of details seem a little off, but you figure it's, you know, it makes for a better story. All right, well, I don't before... know how you know all of this, but I also don't care because that was a musical masterpiece. <laughs> okay, before the Aradova's lawyers could hear... Uh... <laughs> oh, don't worry about them. They've been on my case for like 40 some odd years. <laughs> Speaking of the Aradovas, uh, the They're day before... Dead. Oh, oh shoot! <laughs> yeah, they're not hearing the song. I pulled song? my knife and murdered all of them. <laughs> oh man! Uh, Pip made the doll uh, in her form and wanted to know what her greatest phobia was. Oh yeah. Uh, is that something you've you've done that you want to to get now? You don't have to give it to me now. No, I mean, I mean, sorry. That Pip has done. You are doing okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I can tell you uh, what you have found out about uh, uh, about Shalira Aradova's greatest phobia. Um, she is terrified of small spaces. She's very scared of being uh, locked in small sp in small spaces where she would struggle to breathe, uh, where everything is dark around her. You know, the kind of darkness that not even elven eyes can pierce. And above all else, she has this deep, deep fear of being buried alive. Excellent. Cool. So, that's good. When Squeak followed her home last night... <laughs> uh, Squeak followed her home? Absolutely. Okay. No. <laughs> you buried her alive. <laughs> She's dead. No. Um, no, Pip would just share that information with Pontifex um, about what her, her greatest fear is. Um, and also, like, right before bed, Pip would prick the doll with a needle and then go to sleep. Which does... A d6 of psychic damage. Oh! <laughs> She's Sucking a commoner. Migraine. She's dead. No, just... Oh, kidding. shoot. No. <laughs> <laughs> do I roll prick. or do you roll? Eh. Uh, hit. Dead. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> that had some. That prick had some malice. Be better get out of there before a lawyer is to find you. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. Uh, with the, right before bed. <laughs> with the great success of his story, which is like uh, of, of his song, um, <laughs> uh, Rowan um, will will take Talix's request, um, and he will play on his lute and. Uh, uh, Rather than sing a song, you will tell a story. Huh? The cunning fox had tried for centuries to make his way to the top of the great tree Vakanath. He had heard wonderful tales of a fruit that supposedly grew on one of the tallest branches, and according to the rumors, whoever would find and taste the fruit would be granted all the knowledge of the world. The fox, much smaller and weaker than most animals that lived in Vakanath's branches, knew that the only way to gain their respect was to find this fruit, but he had made little progress so far on his own. So one day, he decided to ask for assistance. He approached the mighty wyvern without any fear in his heart, despite the difference in size between the two. Wyvern, Wyvern, the fox called. I need your help. Your wings could take us both to the tallest branches of Vakanath, and once there we could split up and search for the fruit. Then we'll each have a bite, and we'll both learn everything that we desire to know. The Wyvern chose to assist the fox, 
who climbed on his back and then held on tight. The two of them spent more years making their way upward through Vakanath's branches, encountering many enemies and dangers along the way, but eventually they made their way out of the tree and landed at the very top. There they split up to search for the fruit, and the fox found it first. The wyvern eventually realized that both the fox and the fruit were gone, and that his friend had decided not to share the reward. The fox had betrayed him. Many days later, the wyvern was once again approached by the fox. Wyvern, wyvern, the fox called. I need your help. I now know everything there is to know. And only now do I realize the truth I used to be blind to. In all the thousands, thousands of years I have been alive, I was only ever happy during the time I spent with you. I cherish all the memories we have made together. That time you protected me from the lion's fangs, that day we spent playing with the opossum, the dreams I dreamt knowing I slept safely under your wings. I offer you the knowledge you seek. How to make fire that can melt the strongest of metals. How to deliver with your tail a poison deadliest than a viper's. How to clad yourself in armor like the greatest of humanoid generals so that even the fierce, fiercest of dragons will fear and respect you. In return, I ask for you to stay by my side until the end of time. The wyvern thought about the fox's proposition and eventually he answered, Fox, although you may now know everything, you understand very little. Friendship is not something that can be bargained for. It is never taken, but only freely given. You will teach me how to make the hottest of fires, how to poison my enemies and how to protect my weak spots, not because of what I offer in, ret in return, but because you had promised me I'd learn everything I desire to know, and you still need to keep your word. And afterwards, I will give you my friendship. Not as a prize, but freely and willingly given, because I, too, cherish the time we shared together. I do not regret being bitten and clawed in your place. I was happy to make new friends alongside you, and I found purpose when I shielded you from the rain. Because that is what friendship is, and I will gladly teach you this one thing that you still do not know. To this day, the wyvern and the fox are still inseparable friends, and prayers directed at one of them may sometimes be answered by the other. Cool. Roran stops playing and oh. waits for a reaction. He looks a little nervous. Alex erupts in applause. Oh, that was beautiful! was such a good story. I mean, I've, I've heard some versions of it before, but... Oh, you made it sound so much better. <laughs> oh, thank you. <clears throat> I'm, uh, I'm glad you <laughs> you enjoyed it. I uh, this, is, this is a subject I'm somewhat fascinated with, I suppose. I... Uh, well, I just... You know, glad you liked it. You guys um, look like you're, um, you're living, aren't you? Unless you're just taking your horses for a walk across the colony. <laughs> we are, actually. We're setting off on an adventure. Just like the heroes stories. that you are. <laughs> We're leaving the peninsula. Leaving the peninsula? As in... Back to Plurina? No. Insulidaria. <laughs> wow. I... Whatever stories you end up uh, uh, making, 
You'll bring them back to me, I hope. Better yet, I will mail them to you. Ah. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, here's my world point information, if you really do plan to do that. Yeah, assuming the mail service works out there, but who knows. I've uh, uh, never left the peninsula, but I've heard that... Uh, the the male people will go to great extremes to deliver the letters. I mean, Though the costs, well, I... I may not be able to cover them for you. At least some of them have wyverns, so... Uh, I think they can get pretty much anywhere. <laughs> you can trust a wyvern to get the job done. Speaking of getting your job done, that reminds me of a story. Um, and you'll begin to sing another tale. Um, that's that seems to be like his way of saying farewell. Well, I mean, I'm not going to just leave in the middle of a story that is rude. <laughs> Stick around <laughs> many for, things, for the but next Rude one. Is not one of them. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, the the next story that the Roran uh, sings about uh, is as follows. There once was an elven boy who had two dear friends, a wolf who was friendly and protective, but also hot-headed, and a raven who could fly faster than any other bird, but was also exceptionally lazy. The boy was only a farmer, who had worked in his family's land from a very young age. Despite his humble upbringing, his name and the names of his companions were well known, and they were beloved in their village and its surroundings. The wolf, fiercely loyal and ever vigilant, had slain many dangerous beasts that had approached the boy's village. And even the lazy raven had saved lives by fetching doctors across great distances or bringing lost children back to their families. One day, a human king and his army passed through the boy's village, and the boy laid eyes on his beautiful daughter. He felt great love swell in his heart, and he knew that his destiny was to marry the human princess. Only a couple of days later, the human king showed up at the boy's doorstep. The king had an important message that needed to be delivered with urgency. He had seen previously the elven boy's kind eyes, and had known for a fact that he would make sure the message would be delivered with haste. And the boy, of course, was desperate to prove himself in the king, in human king's eyes, hoping to win the princess's hand in marriage. So he accepted the task. He took the letter and he rushed to the raven, begging him to deliver it. But on that particular day, the raven felt quite tired and insisted that the boy deliver the letter himself. At this, the wolf lost his temper, stepped in and demanded that the raven do his job. What's the point? asked the raven. Whether I deliver it or the boy delivers it, it makes no difference now, does it? I'd even say that King would be more impressed if the boy got the job done with his own two hands. The two argued at length for a long time, until the angered wolf suddenly realized that the boy was long gone, already on his treacherous journey to deliver the message himself. The wolf then rushed after his friend, realizing in a panic that he had failed to be by the boy's side and keep him safe. Despite the, per the perilous terrain, through wilderness full of beasts and monsters of all kinds, the limping and bloodied boy had made it to his destination, and the wolf caught up to him just in time to see him deliver the letter in the hands of a group of soldiers. Unbeknownst to him, the boy had just delivered his own death sentence, and he was executed on the spot. 
The vile king had noticed the way the boy had looked at his daughter and had seen it fit to get rid of the farmer far away from his home, where no one would ever know what happened to him. Enraged, the wolf returned to the raven and bit one of his wings, his fangs sinking so deep that the wound would never heal. Let this be a lesson, said the wolf, about the importance of doing our respective jobs. You will never again refuse to, de to deliver a message, no matter how far and no matter how dangerous the journey may be, even if you have to cross between the realms of the living and the dead. And I will never leave the elf's side again, not for any reason in the world, and I will forever watch over them and keep them safe. Roverin once again stops singing and playing and watches for a reaction. Oh. Alex erupts in applause. Oh, that was beautiful! And I've heard some versions of that story. Wait. Uh, you're just so good at what you do. You see, we're, we're, we're in, like squinting for a moment. And then he just like nods, satisfied. Where did you, if I may ask, hear of this story? This particular one? <laughs> I've heard uh, versions of it. Perhaps I have adjusted some details to make it more exciting. But, oh, it would be difficult to pinpoint one particular place or time. I see. Okay. Now, Never don't let mind, me keep I you. <laughs> All right, we uh, we do have a bit of a journey to make, yes. Yes. There is right. much to do and stories to be told later. Great, then uh, it was nice meeting you again. Uh, and as I said, I will send you the world point information or the information we find through World Point, of, of course. It was nice surviving with you. Please don't burn off my face again. <laughs> oh, did I, did I do that? Oh, yes, I did do that. <laughs> ah. No it is only in the spirit of the games. Right. Right, as long as I'm there. <laughs> Less dangerous games for me from now on. It is probably best to stick to stories. <laughs> well, stories don't pay anywhere near as well. Though, thank you, he says, like, uh, checking his, his cap. For what it's worth, I think you were very impressive in the tournaments as well. Uh, Rower and leans forward a little bit like he's about to share some deep secret and he whispers well I honestly I kind of think the whole thing was rigged oh uh, interest in theory all right bye <laughs> okay uh, you leave seemingly alone behind uh, you take uh, you you climb uh, on your horses, for those of you who have them, and followed by by your animal companions, you head east once again. And Pontifex is just happily riding on a, on the back of his horse, and he's like messing around with the cat. <laughs> <laughs> um. The Trasim needed some care um, after you found her again. Um, her, she, had a, she had a lot of... Uh, um, well, she was in a bad shape. Uh, and it, it, it took a lot of care to 
um, get her back in full health, clean, getting removing all the all the thorns and branch and branches sure. and all the mud that was on her. Uh, and it was something that you did like last night and this morning. Uh, she Nothing seems that to have been. Of magic couldn't fix. Right. She seems to have been through a lot. Uh, and she is a lot more skittish than she was before. Uh, she is staying close to you, but also whenever you touch her, she uh, she usually flinches. But then she leans into hey, your hand. How what? are you, hun? Oh. Oh, sorry. Oh, crap. I'm not muted. <laughs> oh, he's talking to Squeak. <laughs> That's funny. But uh, actually, I think I might prefer this new. Uh, you've built some character, you have some experiences, you're not so lofty. A little bit of suffering does, does most people some good. But you are in a better place now, as am I. You sense some frustration coming from her. It's clear that she would have rather not have gone through that. <laughs> as is usually the case, but... It comes to, f uh, to be for the best. And he's like holding the cat up in the air, like arms hooked under her, like armpits, I guess, and just like kind of like swinging her little paws around, like kind of <laughs> operating her like a puppet because he can. <laughs> um, actually, being picked up seems to be one of those things that uh, right now she really does not enjoy, and she constantly tries to wiggle her uh, her way out of uh, your grip. She's just the wiggliest girl. It is very cute. <laughs> so squirt me. Uh, is Austin back yet? Okay. No, it's fine. I can do this later. I guess. More cat shenanigans to my time. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no more, no more cat shenanigans. Uh, these are all wrong. Where did they put it? Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, you have a new place to spend the night in. Uh, every time uh, that uh, that is needed, every time the sun sets, um, Talix is able to bring to life some of the many rooms that his father's uh, tower offers. Uh, and you've been I able... Someone yeah. requested the game room last time, right? Yeah, in the... What else was requested? In the, in the days that... Uh, um, on, on, the, on the journey back to Simlielon, and now on the journey out of it, uh, you've been able to explore each of the uh, remaining rooms. Okay. Um, you would have so you would have found the uh, <laughs> the game room with a with a pristine uh, dragon chess board that, that seems to be in the middle of an unfinished game. Oh. All the other games are otherwise just uh, uh, stuff in in the in the bookshelves, and everything is nicely organized. Uh, really, the, the dragon chess board is the only thing that. That is, uh, ah, uh, that has been left out. What do you think, Professor? Uh, which side looks like they were winning? Ah, uh, whoever was seated in this chair. I uh, see the one without the blue pillow. Do you oh. think they were, uh, do you think he was any good? Do I? Um. Well. So looking. Analyzing I mean, yeah, stuff. looking at the position, you can tell like the game is like in progress, and it is right in the middle, which is the uh, at the most complex that the game can get. Can get they're um, out of like any opening theory and just deep uh, into. Um, a, a part of the game where most of the pieces are still in place. Um, like, most of them haven't been captured, I mean, yet. Um, it uh, is definitely a high-level match that's taking place here. 
And it's not the one side is crushing the other, but you feel like uh, um, one has a slight advantage. They seem to be uh, sort of at the crux of it, but uh, not amateurs. It is rare to find a dragon chess amateur, frankly. Anyone with Initial any interest in dragon chess, they way. usually are obsessed. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not that I am. It is a simple, childish board game, but uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It is a masterful uh, piece of intellectual exercising. But uh, yeah, it, it seems like they know yeah. what they're doing. Just, I'm curious. Uh, if this belonged to Aaron before, then who sat opposite of him? And why was the game not finished? Well... Do you think it could have been Jamiel if they traveled together? Or maybe even your... Well, you know. Hmm. It would make sense if my propensity towards dragon chess was genetic. Does that make sense? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Is dragon chess attitude a hereditary trait? I think maybe it just appeals to people who like things that are very over-designed and over-complicated. <laughs> which seems to be, from what I know of it, Alkin, uh, in their wheelhouse. I mean, if we're being frank, I have a couple of uh, house rulings to make Dragon Chess a little more in-depth. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I really needed some more mechanics. There's just a lot of, you know, lack of C. So I to add a fourth board. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think Pontifex is going to, like, jot down, like, the positions of each piece. Like, you know, one, one page is, like, one side and the other page is the other. And it's, like, this piece at, you know, square... D2A, depending on board or whatever, right, right, just like right. write down positions of everything to record the game. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know the uh, proper the proper way of writing down. Uh... Yeah. And then he's going to uh, just like out of a sense of like he can't help himself, uh, the blue side, the blue pillow side, he's going to make a move. He's going to move one <laughs> of the pieces that's like uh, to try to make a play. He's just going to start okay. like a, he's going to take a strategic turn as does if he was them. Mm, that, that would be the side of the black pieces. Perfect. You move the black piece. Yeah. Uh, um, somewhere. Uh, are, are you making like the best move that you can think of? Yeah, he's okay, basically like to if I was it. in this position. Okay. Um, just just do me a roll for like with your, you know, with your real special proficiency of yeah, dra dragon chess. I do. <laughs> may or may not have used my racial bonus thing on dragon chess. Natural 20. <laughs> oh, yes. Wow. Uh, one in the 20. Um, well, the one was it on the D4, the bonus that I get. Oh, I thought that was, like, advantage. This particular move is one of those that, like, to anyone who doesn't get it, seems kind of weak. It seems like you're op you're leaving yourself open to lose one of your most valuable pieces, but you can see that it will pay off 14 moves from now. It is it. A bait. Uh, I'm a master of it. <laughs> <laughs> As for the other rooms, you see that the uh, the kitchen the kitchen never actually has, uh, despite what I've built, um, any food in it. Um, you're not really sure if food would even keep here, and the fact that there that there isn't any probably means it wouldn't. Um, That's okay. But uh, it is here so I that you can cook. Can create bland food. <laughs> forty-five <laughs> pounds of food. Of food to be delicious. Ooh, I can create forty-five pounds of food and thirty gallons of water, and containers within range, enough to sustain up to fifteen people or five steeds for twenty-four hours. And then you use the kitchen wow. to season it. Well, I have pressed the digitation. I can simply season it to be whatever I want. 
Uh, yes. Yeah, there I feel is like the kitchen won't get a lot of views. Problems. <laughs> The empty room is empty for the most part. It has a few a few crates, some wood. Um, it looks like it was half used to just store a few things in it that uh, uh, couldn't go anywhere else. Uh, also, small correction, the kitchen actually does have... It has things like flour. Uh, some, some things that will keep. I see. Uh, and it can and some spices, leave. luckily. Oh my god. Wait. Um, if the flour was in the tower and we bake <laughs> bread and eat it, what happens when we leave the tower? You're suddenly very hungry again. <laughs> well, what but what about the food that's already been absorbed and like turned into our cells? <laughs> you lose like some molecules of skin. Seems like you've eaten fairy food without asking permission. <laughs> We all know how that goes. You can always test it. There is one way to find out. A reckless <laughs> experimentation. Uh, then there is the topmost floor. Uh, the, the observatory. And you find some some notes um, in uh, Arin's handwriting. Um, the oldest ones are about the, the sky above Plurina, but the more recent ones, still a few years old, but uh, some of these notes are about uh, the skies above Lidaria instead. Oh. Um, um, it what also has... What sorts of things was he following? Stars? The moons? Uh, everything. Okay. He, seemed, he was uh, just... Some of it seems to be his own research, and some of it seems to be confirming uh, other people's findings. Um, he seems to have been tracking the movements of the moons uh, and of the stars across the sky, and uh, the um, uh, the planes that could be seen with a naked eye, and those <coughs> that could be seen with a, with a spyglass. And there is a pretty expensive spyglass on this uh, uh, at the top of the tower. Half of it uh, is a closed-off room where the roof is, but the other half is wide open. You can't see just outside all around you and it's a it's a good vintage point tell us uh, to take a look through just to just to see i don't think he's it's not likely he's had a chance to look through a telescope before um definitely not you've you've heard how expensive this kind of equi equi equipment can be um, wait i can't see anything what's the point of this Pontifex removes yeah. the cap from the other side. <laughs> 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 Even after that, tell us. I think you're pulling the cap off, but his face is there, and you just have this like super <laughs> mega zoom distorted. Uh... <laughs> Actually, we have a picture of it it's up on the picture, wall. It's a picture, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just his eyeball. <laughs> it's just like like a candid upshot of his nose. <laughs> you can count the nostrils. Who? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, this is not uh, a a subject that Alex has ever studied. Uh, just the sky. I mean, he he knows the basics about the sky itself, but he he That's... really doesn't even know how to use this particular piece of equipment uh, and the notes don't really come with a simple manual it's uh, during this downtime uh, that some of you uh, become aware of uh, some of you uh, some of your new items uh, uh, properties uh, starting with Talix. Oh. I will put a certain petal in your inventory. Huh. It is in your equipment section. 
Uh, so they're not just using it to track us? What? Why would you suggest something like that? Oh, <laughs> is that what they're doing? How what? No, what? Crazy. I mean, it's... I thought maybe you were just doing like a play on Talix's flyer pedal thing. <laughs> but like, bigger. Ah, uh, you'll find on your card or sheet now the Follette pedal. I think I, have to, I think I have to refresh. Yeah, yeah, you have to refresh. All right. Um. Can I read it out loud? Is that okay? Okay. I I was I thought maybe we were just gonna move on to the next person. I figured that um, it would be nice. You, you can. Yeah, read it read it out loud. Okay. This pedal is as long as your forearm and does not decay. To unlock its powers, a creature must hold the pedal at the end of a long rest and sing a specific set of notes. Afterwards, the pedal's magic remains active for that creature and that creature only. If a different creature obtains the benefits of the pedal, the effect on the previous creature ends. The pedal grants you access to the spell's nature... to the spell Nature's Resilience which is added to your class's spell list and may be prepared and cast normally. Hmm. Nature's Resilience. Is it in my thing right now? Is that... Or do I have to... It no. is now on your spell list, so you can you can prepare it. Not... Oh, okay. Let me see. To answer Austin, yes, it is a Lidarian spell that you have seen in action once. Where do I... S what level is it? Maybe that will help me. Oh, convenient. Okay. Um, it's a long one, so that one you don't, uh, you don't have to... Yeah, I'll just read, read it for right now. Okay. Uh, moving on to Pip, you've been looking through this particular rock for a while. Um, it makes it makes everything look a tiny bit distorted, uh, but it's kind of fun, especially when you hold it up to someone's face. Uh, <laughs> it makes their chin really wide. Uh, and and the more time you spent with it, the more you started to catch glimpses of something else through this rock and you've been just uh, at this point kind of like a detective detective holding uh, um a magnifying lens you've just been walking all over just holding up this thing to anything you can see and you've been noticing small differences in the world around you uh, whenever you look around and the more you've been t paying attention the bigger these differences looked and you could you could even see um, greater um, changes in the environment around you. Uh, it seems like whatever you're seeing is not actually what is around you, but it's as if you're glimpsing into a different, though somewhat similar world. What? I will add the item to your inventory. Crazy. And it's there. Yours requires attunement. What? Hey guys, I can make plants grow like she did in the in the Colosseum. And and Casimir gave him this? Mm-hmm. After all Pip had done to him. <laughs> um, Imagine what he would have had if you didn't do this to him. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that was a lesson to you. <laughs> like maybe another wand, you little shit. <laughs> I think no, Pip kidding. is just like... I mean, he's he's running all throughout the tower, just looking at things through this gym. I'm and then he's like... He starts going through his backpack and taking out everything there and looking looking at different stuff and he, he takes the snow globe out and, and gives it a shake and, and peers through the, the gym. 
Okay, the snow globe doesn't look any... Uh, any different in the sense that it doesn't look like anything. Uh, you don't see the snow globe <clears throat> through the gem. But then again, you also don't see... Um, you actually don't see your companions either. Uh, now that you've gotten like a good uh, <laughs> grasp of the gem, um, whenever you look around, the tower is there, but your friends aren't. What? What? Squeak, look through this. <laughs> Do you see me? <laughs> Do I see Squeak? <laughs> Everything that Squeak sees through it is exactly as he sees it without the gem. You seem to be the only one who sees anything different through it. Huh. Because you're attuned to it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that did nothing special going on. Cool. Okay, which which brings us to Tekka. Um uh, how do I put this? <laughs> Um, Tekka. Mm -hmm. Things have been feeling a little easier for you today. On your uh, on today's uh, journey, you always found yourself slightly ahead of everyone else. Whenever they were trudging through tall grass, you would just easily walk right through it um, whenever they whenever they were um, they were tired you still had some energy although well you took every chance you had for, for a nap and uh, you've been feeling like your like your body is a lot more uh, almost like more fluid like you have a better control of yourself and like you could uh, easily slip out of any dangerous situation you feel like perhaps Casimir might have seen uh, something in you that uh, that only you have he trusted you with protecting your your friends and uh, for some reason he gave this task to you in particular and you're not quite sure if perhaps he was worried that uh, you would be the one uh, most often in trouble, perhaps of what you are. Perhaps he foresaw that um, more people would mistreat you than uh, uh, any of the other people you're with. So you're not really sure if that uh, was like a well-meaning, but somewhat also kind of mean gesture. Or if maybe his faith in you has um, nothing to do with your race. And that's just what it is. Just faith in you. I'll be adding the item to your inventory. And this All one right. too requires uh, attunement. Got it. And you can refresh. There we are. Okay. While you wear this ring, difficult terrain does not cost extra movement. Also, magic cannot reduce your speed or cause you to be paralyzed or restrained. Freedom of movement. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Did I have read mine? Uh, if you want to. Okay. Uh, well, everyone else did, so I figure I should. <laughs> uh... This gem has three charges. As an action, you can speak the gem's command word, question mark, and expend one charge. For the next 10 minutes, you have true sight out to 120 feet when you peer through the gem. It regains charges daily at dawn. Awesome. Command word, question mark? Does it have you one? You can make it up. Oh, snap. I'll have fun with That's that. That's the command word? It's oh, oh snap! <laughs> <laughs> the deal is done. The pact is made. 
Oh, snap shall be the words of my calling. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Casimir's loaded, dude. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> he can leave for a while to gather more things and then come back. <laughs> Everyone ride a wish, wish list. <laughs> Time to cast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mail a single letter that just says my prism. Pontifex, oh. you've had the time to take a look at the staff you have won from the tournament. Uh, so of course you know exactly now uh, what mm -hmm. it does and what it provides. And yep. as uh, as Barry and Thar had promised, it it should keep you safe. Is, uh, it has a decent amount of use. Okay. With this out of the way, we're going to take a short break. Uh, how okay. how much longer can everyone keep playing for today? Uh, I have a bit of a hard stop at our normal stop time today. Which is um, in one hour, like in 53 minutes. Uh, I don't on. know what that normal stopping time is anymore. Uh, we were normally one to five central, so two hours uh, in a little under two hours. Yeah. Okay. What about everyone That's else? That's like my my hard hard stop. Same. Yep. Two hours are good. Sure. Okay. All right then. I'll see you in ten minutes. Wow. Feels Bye, like everyone. Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. In the server, Austin asked the uh, what. Pip saw when looking at Squeak through the gem. Uh, and the answer is that he saw a cage. What? Okay. Oh. So it is not it is. true sight. Okay. Dream sight? <laughs> huh. Okay, that's it. Where did Casimir get this? Casimir, I have questions. <laughs> Unless we gotta be Ladarian. Casimir. <gasps> so. Oh my gosh. Okay, pumpkin. All right, fine, fine. You can be on my lap. There she is. Okay. Now we can continue. Now that the cat is comfortable. That was important. <laughs> um, this time you're not rushing the way you did when Saskarin first led you uh, to Orm. Um, that particular march was uh, uh, was kind of exhausting and right at the limit of how far you could go. Uh, this time you're a bit more, you're a bit slower, not because you're not in a hurry, the things you have to do are quite important, but because you're cautious, you're keeping an eye out. Expecting trouble at any moment. You know that somebody knows at all times where you are. And you know that he's getting closer. He slows down your journey a little bit. And you end up uh, um, setting camp, or rather summoning the tower, one extra time uh, compared to, to last time. And uh, on that particular night uh, as the tower is summoned and you're all making yourselves comfortable uh pip you're playing around with this with this gem again uh you you can't help it there's only uh, you can it, it seems that its magic is limited uh you can't just use it at all times um, but at least during your breaks, so uh, sometimes when you stop uh, uh, during the day and uh, once in the in the evening, as you're still figuring out exactly um, its its code word um, and all the little differences that you notice when you look through it. Um, at some point, inside of the tower, you spot something that you see through the gemstone, but you don't see without it. 
flying in the middle of one of the many rooms is this very large, colorful, fluffy moth who seems to be um, flying from one of your companions to the other, landing on their heads, cleaning its little legs. There it is again. Oh, hey! Uh, Brooke, don't move. Don't move. Pip is going to get very, very close and try and touch the moth. Your hand goes right through it. Huh? Brooke, there is a... There is a moth on your... We had seen it before. You believe me, right? Brooke, are you even listening to me? Are, are I'm you? muted again! <laughs> 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 I was like, stop interrupting me, please! <laughs> I can see the I can see the muscles well, right? No? 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 Oh. Uh, uh, can you, well, can I, hmm, do I feel anything? It no. already flew away. Oh. <laughs> Hold on. Oh. I'm following it. You won't oh. Um. Dega! <laughs> <laughs> what? It's on I your staff. What will it do? I don't know. It's just sitting there? It is not harming us. It can stay. Huh. Just make sure to warn us in case the floor turns into sand and sucks us in again. I mean, the only other time I saw something like this was in a dream. So, am I looking into dreams? Your connection with dreams is important, Pip. You are fortunate. Hmm. All right, I'm. I'll keep an eye on it, okay? Yes. And then your gem runs out of power. Ah shoot! Ah, uh, so in the tower is anyone present when we arrive? What, what do you mean? Oh, we we oh, have a, we wait, wait, which tower? Are, are are we walking towards the tower? Is anything happening? Uh, right on the now way is there? one evening, like right before a long rest, uh, in uh, Arian's tower. Yeah, we're we're in the tower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was wondering if anything else happened. That's all. Um, well, before moving on with the long rest, I wanted to know if there was something you guys wanted to do. Um, I think after Pip's gym runs out of juice and he's not able to look through it anymore, he'd try and find some other things to occupy his time. So, what rooms are up right now, have we decided? Game Go ahead room, and pick kitchen. Jason. Oh, oh, he's going to be picky. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Uh, let me just roll for it. Wait, I can't really. Whatever. Uh,. Let's do kitchen, sauna, uh, office, I guess. Okay, that actually works out pretty well, because Pip, Pip would have wanted to look at that herbalism book that Aaron had, and, like, take it to the kitchen if, if Talix let him, mm -hmm. and um, he would get out, like, a mortar, mortar and pestle, 
and um, he chants some words over it until the mortar, the mortar's legs actually extend a little bit and begin tapping on the counter and moving by itself. Uh, oh. This is Pip's tiny servant. Oh. Um, and it, the the mortar and pestle servant is going to help as Pips tries to figure out some some recipes. Okay. Let me bring up the book. Uh, what were the rules on learning new recipes? Um, when I come across a new recipe, add it to recipes known. Learning a new recipe, yada yada. I can learn recipes based on time spent, and there's a cost to it as well. Um, so I think Pip would just, you know, start trying to learn some common recipes. I, I think Talix has been spending the night studying Boovin's dictionary. Also, since I always forget to... I forget about it. I'll just mention that. We're still taking watch on some, right? Yeah. Okay. A stirring watch or for, you know, between the time whenever we set up or go to bed. Am I crazy or do we have only one recipe for common recipes? Oh wait, there's another page. Okay, there it is. On the right column. Got spreadsheets. Okay, you have the. You have the money. Yeah, most of them. Yeah, I do. Okay, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. All these recipes, uh, all the common ones, are available for Pip to learn. Uh, so you just need to spend the time and the money. Uh, usually, you guys only open up this this tower for long resting, so you can count like uh, two hours per day of work uh, towards learning oh. a new one. Is that is that reasonable? That that makes sense. So that's like two out of eight hours. Uh, yeah. Work days like eight hours. Hmm. Sounds good. Okay. Talix, when you wake up the following morning after your long rest, um, you glance immediately at your companions wondering uh, if anything happened during the night that you don't remember. Um, but nobody's freaking out. Wait, if... why, why, why do I think that? What? Because the last time we slept in here, the floor turned into sand. The last we've been focused. sleeping here every night. Uh, well, oh. I meant well, because the, the moth was around, but I guess you guys were oh. not worried about that. Oh, okay. Well, I did tell Pip to warn us in case he's. <laughs> Man, nobody was uh, worried about anything and nothing happened, so it's all good. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> uh, which means that you're ready to continue to the other tower. Um, let me build this back up. Uh, you arrive in front of this one doorway in the middle of nowhere, still very uh, exposed, very uh, curious to find it just like this. And you imagine that it used to have a bit more cover before Ormatin Art started to uh, tear down uh, everything in the environment around it. Um, who's... Who's knocking on it? Don't worry, this has, this has no relevance whatsoever. 
Poor Alma, if it had... Oh, you can go. You can go. If it has no relevance, you can go, Tech. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> yeah, you, you just knock on the door and there is no reply. Uh, the raven that was sitting in, in, on top of the door frame, the, the metallic one, uh, is still there and just tilt its head to the side a little bit. Uh, hello? You say hello to the mechanical raven, but there isn't any any acknowledgement. Tekka will push the door. Uh, Tekka, you put your hand on the on the handle, uh, and as soon as you lower it, I need everyone to roll a, a dexterity. No, nope, a strength saving throw. Nice. Let's go! Oh. Wait, not let's go, I'm better at it. Oh, my favorite. <laughs> yes, me too. Oh. Are we all dead? <laughs> <laughs> Did we try to push the door, but the door pushed us? Uh, the door does push you in a sense that instead of uh, pushing uh, outward, like away from you guys, it blasts in your direction. Uh, and Tekka, you're knocked to the ground. Everybody, everybody's knocked to the ground. Uh, the horses fall over and they neigh in fear and they begin to scramble around as every single one of you is hit by this jet of water with incredible strength. Uh, and for, for some of you, it goes in your nostrils and you can feel it going down your lungs uh, and you find yourselves coughing uh, as incredible amounts of water are pouring out of this door and just turning the, the, the terrain all around you into mud. Uh, Talix will try to pull himself up and run up to the door and shut it. Can I, like, if, try to help him with... I was about to say, if he's the first one to react, I can also... Or, like, while, while people are trying to close the door, can I try to, like, shape water and try to, like, freeze, uh, like, the water behind the door just to try to, like, slow it coming out to make, like, a, a bit of a blockade? Okay. Uh, you can cast your spell. Brook and Talix can roll um, both of them an athletics check. Or just one of you with advantage, whichever you prefer. Do you want me to? Let's both roll one. Alright! <laughs> <laughs> How are you in strength base? What do you think you're gonna do that I can't? Sit Whoa. the fuck down, boy! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's up? What's up? You've grown so strong, I forgot so that you had the belt. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot the end of strength. <laughs> Why even send points on strength? Them elven biceps coming in. Wait, did you say strength or athletics? <laughs> athletics. I said athletics. Okay. Yeah. Um, the, the two of you pull yourselves up, and there's a moment when the flow of water seems to slow down, uh, as a good portion of the doorway is now blocked by a giant ice cube directly on the opposite side. Uh, and the cube itself is not big enough to stop all of the water, but it did slow down, uh, slow it down significantly. Uh, and in the time... Uh, in, in, in the time that it takes for Talix and Brooke to, to walk up to the door, trudging up in the mud uh, and push the door closed, um, you could just see that the inside of the room that's on the other side of this doorway uh, seems to be, for the most part, flooded. And then you close the door. You hear it clicking. And you step away from it, and not a single drop of water is uh, leaking through the uh, the frame anymore. You're all drenched and cold, and a little scared, uh, but it, unharmed. It was slightly refreshing, but also uh, it, 
seemingly unnecessary. How was the water? Was it salty? Yes. Orm, you hear us? <laughs> is the raven still perched up there? The raven the is still perched, and it was like unfazed about everything that just happened. Pip got washed like 80 feet downstream <laughs> and he's like making his way back. <laughs> the, the child that was with you is missing. <laughs> Just sloshing through the mud and uh, uh, Squeak is like in uh, um, squid form. <laughs> Just like clutching tight to Pip's shoulder um, as they make their way back. And Pip is like <laughs> Did they open the wrong door? I think there might be a door down at the beach. <laughs> yeah. Do you think the... You know, do you think the tower was moved? Or is it just like that now? Maybe was... Orm was testing doors and one of them was, you know... In the ocean. So you're saying that we need to go in there and shut another door? Maybe. Or let it drain. Hey, if there's a door in the ocean and we open this door, could we drain the whole ocean? <laughs> uh, eventually it would spill back into itself, but only... <laughs> Then we set up a water mill and you got infinite energy. Uh, that, uh, um, something I'm actually slightly here. impressed at your engineering aptitude. <laughs> what have I done? All right, well, let's after, retire. After... We're going into the we're going into the power plant business. <laughs> <laughs> after this this small back and forth between you guys about a couple of minutes have passed and the beak of the raven on top of the of the door frame opens up and you hear you hear Orm Tenard's voice as he says oh 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 shit okay I'm so sorry guys you, you can come in okay how about you this open the door <laughs> right yeah yeah well, one second Alex will jump back. <laughs> yeah, you step back. You go behind the door just to be super safe. And about 10 seconds later, uh, the door opens. And there is still a little bit of water that washes out. But it's like one foot high. And uh, uh, it all leaks out uh, uh, at its own speed. You, fi you find uh, an absolutely drenched uh, dwarf. Uh, who seems just very unhappy with the whole situation and he's just um he's trying to to get as much water out of his beard as possible he looks mortified so uh been trying out the other doors yeah Well, I know which ones not to open. Mm. Well, can't wait to hear about the good ones. Okay, well, let's let's get to it. I love this game. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you step in to find that the the room full of doors uh, is you know the way you left it, but the the floor is completely wet, and it looks like there was a um, there was something like this big wooden uh, like a series of wooden planks that were laid over the grate. Uh, uh, that leads downward. Uh, but looking now, you can see that a lot of water still seems to have seeped uh, in the lower floors. Um, and you figure it's probably kind of a mess down there, and you're not really sure about the 
the amount of damage that might have happened, but uh, um, from from the expression on on Orm Tinhard's face, it seems like things aren't uh, ah very good. So, uh, would it still be flooded down there? Talos gonna like take a peek down into the. That uh, Jamiel's downstairs, right? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Some hmm. some water went through. Uh, is everything gonna be okay there? I. Well, everything I haven't made that is downstairs is driven by magic, which I figure water will not touch, but I don't even want to start thinking about what happened to my machines. I don't, I don't want to go downstairs. <laughs> I'm just going to sit here. Wait. Did oh. we ever learn how the machines work? <laughs> <laughs> which ones? Orm's machines. Uh, no, not really. Okay. <laughs> he's like no, in the middle of the... over that part. <laughs> he's he's just like rubbing his forehead, um, like he, he like he just has this huge headache. Um, and then he glances at the group and says, "So how was your day?" <clears throat> Is that opening the door? The door was the most exciting thing, right? Yeah, I suppose oh, yeah, that's I good. Mean, sort of just getting started, really. Well, welcome back. What's, um... um what are we doing? Is it time to wake Jamiel up? Wait, really? Uh, you, I, you would? I don't know, I'm asking you. Well, I mean, would I? <laughs> uh, the original plan was to do that after I got my hands on his book and changed it and published it, but I guess that's out of the window. Is it safe to wake him up? Safe? Well, I don't think he's going to blast any of you with magic, though I'm not entirely sure about myself. Hmm. I'll just hide behind We're you. You look like the you? tallest one. <laughs> he won't see me. Eventually, if he tries to aim for you really hard, he will hit you through me. Oh, well. You're willing to but sacrifice yourself for me, won't you? I'm sorry, are, are we... Can I make these jokes, or do we not know each other well enough yet? That's fine. You go ahead. Okay. Well, thanks for shielding me, Brooke. <laughs> That's what I do if you pay me the right amount of money. Ah, shit. <laughs> well, I'm broke, so... I don't know, should we wake him up yet? Well, what would we do with him afterwards? I don't think we have that figured out. I'd say no? Unless... you really want to talk to him right now. From everything that I knew before, everything that we've learned since coming here, uh, originally he was supposed to take us to the center of Lidaria as a guide. It would certainly make our Oh, suddenly I have a much worse <laughs> feeling about this. Sorry, I <laughs> forgot to switch to music. Apparently I said something very wrong. 
Oh. Why do I hear boss music? <laughs> yeah, really. I am insulted, good sir. Prepare yourself. <laughs> if... I mean, if there's any chance that he can help us, it would be... It would certainly make everything so much easier. Knowing what you know now, can you trust this guy? I don't know. I, I don't know, know who either. we can trust. Well, the stones are or... impartial. Oh. Pip grabs a, a bunch of rocks from his pouch and starts laying them out on the ground. You're not really sure what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> he's Playing arranging them in some sort of pattern. <laughs> Please proceed. This will yeah, take a while. Yeah, it takes him a while. <laughs> <laughs> What's the game with the black and white, like, stones? Like, you flip up, uh, up upside down oh, to, like, oh, make oh. rows? Hello. Mm. Reversey? Oh, not Othello? Go? Wow. No. Multiple I'm... games. Uh, Go. It's Go. Oh, it is Go? Yeah. Okay. Sure, but all these stones are also coming also come in different colors. It doesn't feel like a game. It feels more Fantasy like... Go. <laughs> well, to Pontifex, it almost feels like a spell. I think he's like checking out of the conversation and just watching Pip. If Jamuel wakes, he can leave. We cannot stop him. I actually think we don't really know except for him being our guide what to do with him, especially with the info we've gotten from Orm. Uh, I do imagine he would boot me out of his sour as soon as he wakes up. I can't yeah, guarantee that he will let you use, uh, you know, this room. But it is not my intention to hold him hostage either. It's, well... I mean, he's a person. He doesn't deserve it. Or whatever. Still, he's... Whatever we don't know about him, we don't know. And he's the greatest hero, hero in Ladoria. <laughs> and can we really rightfully keep him the way he is just to suit our own interests? Just so we can use his possessions here? Usually, I would say no. <laughs> but... Seeing what we've learned over the past few weeks, what we have to do... I think... That could be as important, and we need this tower for that, right? Or it at least makes it very, way easier. If we figure it out. It's a risk. Pip. Yes. One of the pebbles begins to move. It rolls to one side, it flips over. Then it flips over again and again. And the others begin to move as well. It's like there is a strong wind going in a spiral and each of these pebbles is moving in a circle. They move and they roll over and over and over until they begin to slow down and stop. The position that they started from is exactly the same position that they end up in. Uh, your answer is nothing. I 
guess it could go either way. Storm, think of us. <clears throat> You're asking a book? No. I'll just write up here. Look. Well, I've made my case. Yes, maybe he won't do exactly what we want, but that's life. And fear that he won't help us is not a good reason to keep him imprisoned. The moral thing to do, I think, is to let this killing, which is what it was, be undone. As it should have been. But we should take a vote, ultimately. That's what we've been doing so far. So, so I vote here. Okay. Between the five of us. I vote that we save him. Alright. I'll vote to not save him yet. He would have information on my family, so maybe save isn't the word, but recover him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Get over here, you're on my side. <laughs> oh, wow, that new Lenorian smell is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, I'm watching Pip do his thing. Talix. Pip. Oh, go on, carry on. Carry no, on. no, you got it. Okay. <laughs> Talix, teacher. Find one incentive. If you find one reason for Jamuel to stay here and speak. I will not vote against you. As I said, he might have information about my parents, so that is all the motivation I need. For which, what reason will Jamuel tell you that? Oh, I'm not because asking. Because apparently taking the seed to Lidoria was his idea, right? That's what he saw in my dream? Yeah. Apparently, I'm doing what he wanted. I don't understand why. That's one more thing I have to learn from him. So you will present that to keep oh. him here. Yeah, I may as well. He seems to already know who I am and why I'm coming. Apparently he's the reason I'm here. And that's something that I'd really like to know. Why? I do not agree with the seed. But your reasoning is sound. I hold my book. Mm. 
Pip just looks down at these rocks in front of him and uh, he says the rocks don't say anything bad will happen but they don't say anything good will happen either what do you it, think is right Pip I, I, I don't know I don't know we've got a lot that we have to do Will, will Jamil being back help us get that done, or will he stop us from doing it? I can't tell you. I say, let's let him out. All right. Does Squeak get a vote? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> he says, I well, say I we think. kill the rest of the bodies. <laughs> <laughs> I vote we all go to the beach. <laughs> Meet dear old We dad. gotta find my dad. <laughs> we know is where Jamie, the, my the dad? Frog. No. <laughs> we know where the door is now. We can go there. Which is the... Hey, Orm, which is the beach door? Uh, the one over there. The big one. Perfect. This one? Okay. This one right here. Anyway. I am <laughs> yeah, someone should sealing it. The beat. Uh, I'm not touching this one ever again. What a fucking mess. <laughs> um, <sighs> and Pip would, would take out his new uh, gem of seeing and say, but on one condition, I want to go down there and I want to take a look around first. Make sure there's nothing we're not seeing. Okay. That seems reasonable. Yeah. Why is Pip, Pip would use the gem of seeing uh, in this room and then look downstairs as well. Okay. Uh, you say the command word. To be determined. <laughs> oh, it's not all crap? Oh, fine. Oh, snap. <laughs> oh, snap. Yeah, you'll, oh, you'll snap. think about it. Uh, but you, you speak the command word, um, and you feel the gem, like, like the temperature of it shifts ever so slightly, and you hold it up to your eye, and it blinds you. There is light everywhere, all, all around you, and it's so intense, and of all colors, you immediately pull your eye away from the gem. That hurt! Okay, never mind. <laughs> Ow! Well, what? Well, what does that mean? He has some sort of protection against magic that would be used to uncover his secrets? Maybe so. Well, that doesn't make me feel better. Hmm. But, um... I guess if, uh... Things don't go well, we... We've always got some extra ones, right? Oh, uh, yeah. For <laughs> him. <laughs> yeah, for totally. Him. <laughs> I'm not sure about the rest of us, but, uh, yeah. Well, as long as you don't lose your entire body, you know, you can do without an arm or a leg. It's not so bad. Oh. oh. Uh, yeah, can you fix this up? I could, yeah. I guess I'll count on that <laughs> in that terrifying hypothetical scenario. <laughs> Come on. Let's go downstairs. 
as they walk downstairs, uh, Squeak sort of scampers over to Orm's shoulder and says, Hey, how's that mech suit coming along? Whoa. Oh. Yeah, not not ready yet. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I'm, I'm not in a hurry or anything, you know. I'm just, you know, it'd be cool. <laughs> so, uh, just, you know, checking on that. It is my highest priority right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Uh, the, the floors below, it doesn't look like they were flooded, uh, but water definitely went down the stairs and like the area all around the center of those floors, they're, they're, there's water everywhere. Um, luckily the place where most of the water seemed to end, up, to end up was the mostly empty storage area, although you do see, you do, you do see Orm Tenart just weeping a single tear uh, as it passes by all of these animal machines he has built and a lot of them are currently just kind of lying down there in a in an unnatural position and they they look like they're not functioning he reaches the lowest floor and you step into this room uh, where the light of each of these pods uh, is illuminating the area you walk up to the one the one you know to be the one uh orm opens up a small chest on one side of the room and takes out this enormous diamond um and it it's making your head spin uh you didn't know that there were diamonds that could get as big as this one it's bigger than orm's head uh and he's actually holding it with like two hands as he carries it over like almost like almost like a cannonball uh, just slowly making his way back to, to the back of uh, this uh, uh, construction. Uh, and you hear a click as he slides, it's in place somewhere uh, in, the, in the inner mechanisms uh, of, uh, well, this, this thing that is actually less machine and more just uh, um, a conduit for magic that is beyond your comprehension. Orm just slams the back of the pod and says all right wakey wakey he touches something in the back um those closest to you would see him pull a lever and you wait you put your eye up to the to the glass looking into this liquid and you just see this this halfling body uh naked just floating in there, slowly rotating a little bit. And seconds pass. And more seconds pass. Until Tinart just says, Uh oh. Uh oh. Have what you tried uh-oh? jiggling it a little bit? Yeah, let me, let me just. Him again? <laughs> you hear him like kicking the thing from the back. Here, take the gym out and blow on it. Right. Maybe, maybe some dust, some water got in. Fuck. A few minutes of troubleshooting later, still nothing. Well. Sorry, guys, that was a waste of time. Um, All shit. that suspense for nothing? Wait, wait. I, I don't... Think... Okay. His soul is still here, right? We can see the... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. His soul is in there, no question. Um, yeah. Unless this indicator broke. <laughs> no, oh it's God. it's it's probably in there. Unless it is all broken. Shit, 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 shit. Okay, hold on. Let me try. Let me try. He like pulls out a diamond from one of the other pots and it's like exactly the same size and cut and you see him like swapping them around still nothing he just he begins to like not even talk to you anymore he's just like trying all these little things it doesn't seem to be going anywhere um Uh, Maybe that's why the rock said nothing. (laughs) 
I mean, I would be lying if I said I wasn't disappointed with the giant diamond and the, the build-up, all of this, the voting. <gasps> Seems okay. a little silly. No, it's 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 fine. Uh, and maybe some water got in. No, uh, this air is dry. Okay, maybe it's Where? been what, too what, long. What, uh, what would that change? Uh, I don't know. Too this, long? This... I thought this was. The, this stuff is mainly the... magic, and not not machinery. Is it the body here? Uh, uh, Talix is going to. What are these things in? Is it like a tank with a? It's like a, ta a glass. Closed? Yeah. Is there a way to open it at the top? Um, it roll an investigation check. Not that you can find. Wait, it's strange. How does it get out? Yeah, you'd uh, you'd you'd think that it would be an easy way to open it, right? Um, and if you're looking for like latches or maybe like some kind of lid. Um, ultimately, you're pretty sure that like the whole glass case opens up from one one half opens up from the other, but the latch to open it is not on your side; it's on the inside. Can I get a clear look at the body? Um, what are you looking for? Do you think for? the body is dead? Oh. <laughs> uh, Tinhart pales a little bit at this. He's pressing his face up against the glass and he says, Well, I... No, I, I, I don't... I don't know. I don't Was think it so. Or does, does it decay? It doesn't look like it is. If you turn the power off, does he die? Let me... I, I can try, but that sounds but like a no, bad idea. No, we don't want to kill him. Uh, uh, that will be no, the last you thing I try. you turned the power off. Maybe he died when you turned the power off. Well, he, sh he shouldn't you have. You killed the animal! No, I didn't! Can we move him through the <laughs> You bastard! <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody's shouting, and I need to, I need to think. Everyone out. Where's Saskarin? He yeah, you haven't seen him. Yeah. Huh. He killed Jamu. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone out. Out, 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 out. He's like beginning uh -huh. to push you guys. Okay. <laughs> right. um, once everybody's out of the room, he closes the, the door behind him. He stays with you on the outside. And he's rubbing his forehead even harder than before. You can see his metal hand just leaving like a little imprint where he has been pushing on his skull. Um, and he opens his eyes and he says, Okay. Okay. I'm going to look into it. Alright, I'm going to look into that and look into the other doors and look into s your thing, Squeak. Uh... I'm just going to need Yeah, some that time. is top priority, by right. the way. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. all this other stuff can wait. Yeah, of course. Horn? Where, I'm where sorry. Is uh, oh. Uh, I sent him off on an errand. Did you need to speak to him? Is he okay? Is he well? He's sitting art hesitating for a moment and he says... Well, he told me what happened in Simliadon. Which Saskarin is he right now? Oh, Do you know? Oh, you've seen that. Ah, he's a good one. He, he's always a good one when he's around me. I mean, that's not that so there's anything you don't special think about that me. He I... would, uh... Oh, gods! No, 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 no. Inside no, I, check. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can roll an inside check. Uh, I don't know. There, there will be some damage. Visible damage on the pod, right? Wait. Um. I don't know. Apparently, Ladarians don't even need to move 
in the world to move in the world, so who knows? Pip, it doesn't seem to you like Wormy is hiding anything. Uh, look, uh, Saskarin just needs a friend. He's been doing a lot better with me. And it's not that there's anything special about me, just, you know, he just needed someone. Oh. When when the entire world rejects you, it's it's good to have somebody who doesn't. That's really all there is to it. Though I'm um, Shit, I mean, I'm, I'm not justifying what he did. He says you guys made things better. Yeah. So where is he? Uh, I needed to get some specific ingredients. I just asked him to go fetch them for me. It's... It's not far, you'll be back by tomorrow. We we don't need to speak to him, that's fine. If you do, I you can leave a message with me and make sure to let him know. Or I mean you can stay here however, however long you like. It's not like it's my house anyway. <laughs> I'm sure our paths will cross again. Here, likely. Well, this is where nice. I'll be. So, uh... suppose you still have a lot to do, and, uh, we should... set out. Here's what uh, I've got. Found... Okay. He reaches uh, the... Ah, this floor. He gestures at various doors, beginning from this one, and he says, Well, uh, you know where this one takes you. He points uh, at this and says, I'm never opening that one ever again. I can't <laughs> even imagine. How would he even go through it? I don't I don't get it. Unless it's, unless it's a place where there isn't always water there. Maybe there is a trick to it. But as far as I can tell from this side, it's just... You open it and the whole thing just fills up with water. It's might be a one way. Maybe, yeah. It might be a way back. Well, and I suppose if you ever end up on that side, maybe... Oh, shit. Uh... Don't use it if unless you really have to. It would really inconvenience me. Uh-huh. I wonder if one of these goes to the realm of the dragons. The what? The what? You know, the sky. Oh. He's gonna like lean over to talk. Do you think it is a good idea to tell them that there is another land they could conquer? Never <laughs> mind. I mean, if you think it is, I can explain, but, uh... He's a little cookie, you know? <laughs> Where's the creepy floating door go to? <laughs> I've been wondering this for so long. Uh, I haven't figured out how to get that one open yet. Most of these, no. they... Uh, it's going to be a while longer, I'm sorry. Uh, that one... The one right next to the one you came to, the tall one, he points towards this metal door. Um, which, like, it feels majestic compared to the others. It's it's in, it's very um, intricately decorated, and uh, it feels... Um, it just feels special, looking at it. Uh, um, he gestures at it and says, That one, as soon as I opened it, somebody yelled at me. Um, it was not a good conversation, and I don't think she's going to let me through any anytime soon. Oh. Wait, so you could understand her? Yeah. Yeah, that was in... She spoke to me in Plurnan. Wait. Do you think... Describe her. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I opened the door... Yes, you know a lot of women, Professor. Everything was just white, and the voice was, well... 
no accent that I could recognize. Oh. Humanoid. Ah. Never mind. I know precisely a single woman in Plurna, so you know, I understand that the likelihood was like one in several million, but uh, Sorry, I was the yelling taken by surprise. Um she asked me for a password. I tried to say hello and began to explain that I didn't know what she was talking about and she cut me off and said uh, um, that it's not my place to oh, shit what did she say it's, this is not something I should look into and to never come back it was um well she seemed uh, displeased Okay, but now on to the good news. I have two doors that actually lead somewhere, and I can open them, and... Uh, well, I don't know if they'll help you. Uh, he points at this wooden door. Um, he says... That one? Um, some kind of forest. I don't know, they all look the same to me. I wouldn't even be able to tell if it was on Plurna or on Ladaria. Um, and then there is this one. Any points? Uh, Wait, do you uh, think there's a chance that these doors go to Plurna? I... Dude, I have no idea. <laughs> Sorry, it just... That's, dude. that's huge. Dude. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> dude! <laughs> I don't know. Did Orm not strike you as a bro? <laughs> um... Then he points at this one that just has like metal bars. Um, and like the frame is in this almost tri triangular shape. And he says, That one leads uh, inside some kind of cave and it's, it's hot. Hot cave? Yeah. All right. Well, uh,. So both of these are safe to go through? Yeah. You can go okay. through and then... Well, I mean... I right, haven't tried so to step in your, and... And, um, you know, close it up behind me. That's fine. Uh, we can just leave them open. I've got the orb of... Uh, of tracking. Uh, one of you take Jamiel, please, and go back through that door. Oh, you, you can't leave in. them open. I, I, I didn't make the rules. They just close on their own. So you don't know if we can get back through. Well, if you'd like, you can go through and you can try to come back. And in 30 seconds, I'll open the door for you. This way we can check. All right. So someone take Jamiel outside that door. The one we came in. Sorry, not Jamiel. <laughs> <laughs> the book we once thought was Jamiel a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, and I'll take uh, the order. Pip, you're the minutes. expert on this. I only recently figured out part of it. Uh, you can bring Squeak back to you from, like, wherever, yes? Yeah. Like, what if he is holding something? Um. Oh, yeah, the order. I, I think so. Uh, Wait, can Squeak uh, use can we try <coughs> this first? Just, hmm. I don't know, give him, like, a. I don't know, go catch, like, a squirrel or something and then see. It might have to be dead first, well, for it to be considered an object. <laughs> Is he an object or a creature? I'm sure I have a spell that only works on creatures, and I could find out. Is who an object? The, the book. But I've, oh. I've got the orb that lets us know where the book is in relation to us. It doesn't mean that I want to just leave it unsupervised. Like, what if Squeak goes through with the book, and then Squeak comes back, and there is no book, and he's just left on the floor? How about you just open the door for me afterwards? <laughs> <laughs> well, what if you can't come back through? What if the door doesn't work? Why are we trying to reinvent the plan that I already had that was fine? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Fine. Maybe I'm misunderstanding, but uh, go for it. I will observe. Okay, someone goes through... 
The book only goes through the door that we know is already safe because it's where we came from. Ah, fair enough. I go through these doors with the orb. But what if you can't come back? Please open the door after I go through. Uh, but he doesn't know if it works. Uh, but the... It should. Probably. Unless the water messed with it. You know what? If probably is good enough for you, Telex, it is good enough for me. I'd give it an 80% chance. In either That's case, I'm coming certain. with you. Okay. Let's try the forest first. So somebody's taking the book. Yeah, we'll just the here. East of Stanley Lawn. Mm -hmm. Anyone want to come with me? Last chance. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. All right, Orm, we're taking this train and running. <laughs> <laughs> Like okay. Um, you you reach for the doorknob and you open the door, um, and there is immediately just just change, uh, both in in temperature and and smells and sounds. Uh, this room, where otherwise every single step would echo throughout all of it, is suddenly filled with the singing of birds and the buzzing of bugs. Uh, on the other side is this thick, thick vegetation uh, to the point where you can't see beyond it. And you kind of, you reach your hand through the door frame and you push through these branches and they don't put up a lot of, uh, a, a lot of pressure. And you realize as you're moving them aside that uh, um, everything you're, you're touching right now was hiding this door frame and looking back at it it was so well camouflaged um, that you feel like it would be really easy to lose sight of it it seems that this door unlike the one that you came through the one that leads to, to the to the peninsula um, it, it looks like uh, Jamil went through a lot of pain either he or someone else to hide it from view and you're surrounded with this lush jungle. Mm. Talix, compared you, to the previous jungle. Yeah, you you know the vegetation of uh, Lerna quite well, and you have been studying uh, um, everything on the peninsula also very well. And the greatest majority of these plants are new to your eyes. Oh, Professor. What? I have no idea where we are. <laughs> oh, shit. That's exciting. <laughs> that might be one of the most terrifying things I've heard of. No, I understand there's places you haven't been, but you usually know of them. This... We've got to be deep in Lodoria. Okay, okay, let, let me confirm. You know, uh... Scientific rigor, as you <laughs> say, I think. Is that what you say? Here, orb. Sure. Uh, <laughs> orb. Where's, where's Orm? You focus on this uh, uh, large spherical gemstone, uh, and you're beginning to get a feel for the location of the book. You are far, far from Simlielon. Uh, you give it some time, let the spell just take hold, and let uh, you yourself get used to, to the feeling. You are somewhere in the northwestern edge of the continent of Ladaria. Oh. Oh. We're on the other... We're so uh, far. That's a useful door. Uh, hold hold so on far. a moment, T Talix. Don't go anywhere. And the professor is gonna like put his big old fish hand on like Talix's shoulder, uh, and he's gonna uh, he's gonna will the cat into existence. Uh, 
and he's going to perceive through her senses and fly straight up, specifically looking for a big-ass white castle. Okay. Professor, if you're hungry, we can just... I, I've got some bread still. He's just like comatose, standing standing <laughs> up with his hand on you. <laughs> Talix, you poke him and nothing is happening. Uh, Pontifex, it actually takes a while for for the Tresim to make her way up. Uh, she flies a little bit, but then the canopy above her, above your heads is so thick that she actually has to sink her claws into the nearest tree and just climb her way up. And she hops from branch to branch until about a minute later she she begins to, to breach uh, through the thickest of the jungle. Um, and as far as the eye can see, there's just more and more jungle. The weather up here is, it's very cloudy. Um, and uh, as the, as the Tresium reaches the very, the very top, um, you, you can feel just these uh, droplets of rain hitting your face, which feels like it's hitting yours through her senses. Mm -hmm. um, and she, she squints a little bit and she cleans her face and she looks around. No sign of a castle. He said we are on the west side. Northwestern. That's like Northwestern. The and the castle was like the south area, yeah. if I remember. If you're talking about the Crystal Palace, it's like right at the border of the yeah. peninsula. Just past yeah. it. Whatever the, the thing that the we had a mock of that we gave to the witch. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Well, I, I just took it a it could just be massive and crazy and gigantic and maybe see it. Uh, okay, yeah, he's gonna he's you're, he's gonna speak unprompted from his own mouth. It is raining uh, in the sky. Uh, one moment, uh, and he's gonna like just give a quick glance around with the cat. See, it's just more woods, uh, and then the cat's gonna start flying back down, and he's gonna move his senses back to himself. Uh, we're in a big ass forest. There is nothing. It is just thick canopy, clouds above, and it is apparently raining. And it can can't even make it through. But just nothing but woods, no lakes, hills, nothing. Oh. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen such a such a jungle. It's. It know, feels epic. so alive. You feel like you could spend days and days just examining the plants that are in your nearest surroundings without even stepping out of view of this door. This door that is so well hidden, so well camouflaged, despite being in the middle of nowhere. You remember that you outsiders are not supposed to ever build anything outside of the peninsula. And the presence of this door frame strikes you as a violation of that rule. I guess what they don't know it won't hurt them. Hopefully. Uh, anyways, isn't this door supposed to open? Uh, let's see if we can open it first. Jiggle, jiggle. Knock, knock. It opens. Okay. Uh, you pushed it outward when you left, and now you you still it still push it still moves outward like into the the tower. So it mm. either swings both ways, or you're not really sure what's going on. But it opens. Uh, you, you see the others like were just about uh, uh, to reach for the handle from the inside, and you look at each other just expectantly. Well, that works. This is incredible. We were so far. It's we're, it's the other. Well, we're side. looking through the door, right? Oh, uh, sorry. Wait, I thought we're we still on came. the other side. Sure. Yeah. Oh, can we? Yeah, can we? Can we speak through the open door? Mm -hmm. oh, cool. For like so far, ten Talos. seconds, and then bending. the door closes on its own. All right. Well, Talix is going in. Yeah, I okay. guess the professor will, will come. I think he's like, when the door is open, he like 
puts one foot on the other side and leaves like one foot where he is. And he's like, I am the widest being <laughs> to have ever been. You know, the door closes on its own and I don't know how much force there is. But, uh... <laughs> and then he'll step through. <laughs> no, this cool. time for him, but a moment, I was theoretically the size of a country. Oh, uh, bigger than In that. width. <laughs> oh. It's fascinating. I wonder if I could make a spell out of this. In widen. <laughs> you also, you go retrieve a paper. No. So, so Pip, uh, Pip was standing on like the other side of the door from where they usually go in. Pip wants to see if when the door opens, if he can go through the other side. <laughs> <laughs> or what he sees when it opens that way and he's on the <laughs> other side. <laughs> From the back, uh, he, yeah. he doesn't see the tower, he just sees like what's on the other side of the door frame. If he steps and through you, the you door step frame. Through, and you're just walking through the door frame. And then if he steps right back. You're in the tower. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, right? <laughs> Absurd. <laughs> Wait, that actually makes no sense at all. <laughs> <laughs> What if you were halfway through and then stepped back? Oh my god! <laughs> Tenard is just shaking his head, like, please, I d don't make I me don't clean act up like you weren't curious too, you pompous uh, shit. This is incredible. Duh. Magic. <clears throat> okay. Oh, sorry, do you have a machine that it is as wide as a city? That, that's not the point. It it's is now the point. It's true that I can't do any of this, but... But I am a nicer person than Jamuel, and that counts for a lot. <laughs> uh -huh. <clears throat> you, uh... You killed Jamuel. <laughs> well... <laughs> it was supposed to be temporary, okay? I, okay, I'll, well, let's I'll, I'll fix that. it right. Mm -hmm. Okay. You guys are being... Very rude, but you're also. Oh, it's I mean, to the other door. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one more. Wait, do one I more. still have to go back, or? Yeah, oh, yeah, Pip, you're, you're kicked out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Was it cool though? <laughs> oh, it was so cool. I'll tell you all about it. Okay. <laughs> Off camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Talix, when you open this door, you are just blasted with this hot air like he didn't expect it to actually get this hot um, this is hotter than the hottest summer you have experienced and it just takes you completely by surprise and you feel like you'd have to take off like half the clothes you're wearing and you still wouldn't be comfortable in the slightest uh, you're looking through and actually your eyes need a few seconds to adjust as um, this section of a cave that you're in is very, very bright. Um, all like everything you're you're seeing through this open door is almost white. It's this like slight uh, orange-ish of color, um, uh, but like closer to white than anything else. Um, and all this light is seeping in through this exit. That you're just seeing maybe uh, 30 or 40 feet ahead of you. Uh, the cave um, bends ever so slightly to the right. And you can just see like a sliver of sky through it. Huh. Uh... This is intriguing. Uh, is anyone coming with me on this one? Sure. Yeah, always. Oh. Okay. The three of you step through. Uh, the other two also requiring a few moments for their eyes to adjust uh, to just how bright the inside of this cave is. And um, you walk forward uh, slightly, slightly uphill until you make it to the exit of this cave and you take one step out and your, uh, your mouth drops. Whereas Pontifex and Talix earlier could hardly see further than maybe 30 feet ahead of them in such a, a thick jungle, you are right now instead in front of this open 
open wide space. There is so much land that you can see ahead of you and it is all rock and sand. Uh, the colors, uh, these, all these hot colors, yellow, orange, <laughs> and red. Uh, you appear to be somewhat like on the side of something that's like a cliff. Uh, and as you're taking in the view, this is an enormous canyon. And you're like halfway between the topmost part and the, and the lowest. It's for the most part barren, but you can just see so, so far. There isn't a whole lot of vegetation, but some some plants do seem to grow. Uh, where the jungle was overwhelming you with with sounds uh, and with life, uh, this place just feels uh, um, kind of oppressing in in how quiet it is. But you can also just take in the the sheer scale of it, and it's it's magnificent in its own way. Ah. Uh -huh. Oof. Talix, where are we? I don't know. I don't want to be here for long. I mean, it's beautiful, but it's... Overwhelming? Oh, yeah. Okay, orb. <laughs> okay. Thanks, me... Great. Let me take this, this off. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Uh, and your map. Whoops, that's the wrong one. Okay. Compared to you, the book is almost directly south. Maybe a little bit to the southeast. You feel like the sea that is directly to the north of the peninsula has got to be between you and uh, that book. You're probably right around the uh, the area where the map you saw in the room with the doors, right where it fades away to nothingness. Perhaps you might even be inside at the, of the very beginning of that nothingness. This might be the edge of where Jamil was able to explore. I mean, it'd be reasonable if this is something that stopped him from going any further. I certainly wouldn't want to travel here for long. Okay, let's get back in the shade. Okay. Ah. Where'd you say this one was again? Kind of directly north across the across the Gulf, okay. like on the other, on the northern half of the Crescent. Okay. Cool. Right at the edge of where Jamil's big map was, like right where it stopped, right where it faded away into nothing. Awesome. You step back in, back in this door too. Um, oh, wait! No, 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 no! Hold on. No. Uh, you turn never around. Closed again. <laughs> no, no, no. You, you turn around. You're, you're, you're done looking down at this enormous canyon. Uh, you turn around and the cave is gone. It's fine. Uh, I'll just walk through and put my hand against the wall. Your hand goes through the wall. Okay. Right where the cave should be, it is there. Uh, and you like, you do the thing that Pontifex was doing earlier with, with, with the door being like halfway on one side and halfway on the other. And you can see that this cave entrance from the outside, it is hidden. Like from this just layer of, of illusion. While from the inside, you could see out just fine. Uh, this door too has been hidden from view. Permanent illusion. Well, Jamiel certainly was very concerned with keeping these doors hidden. <laughs> now I wonder who, who he's hiding from out here. 
I mean, otherwise everyone could come in, right? Even if they find it by accident. Well, I suppose. Stepping down through the cave, then opening the door works just fine. Hmm. Just for something like that to be like a permanent effect is equally as incredible. You go, uh, retrieve Pip once again. Oh, hey, how was it? Oh, Pip, it was terrible. I <laughs> wonder. Oh. And nothing, what? Nothing new and exciting. Oh, it's very hot and dead. Hot? <laughs> very hot. Like a volcano hot? Uh, like the hottest deserts ever. Desert? That's a desert. There's sand in deserts, right? Yeah, sometimes. Like at the beach. Also rocks. Also rocks. <laughs> Boy, I'd really love to go there someday. Just looks <laughs> towards the door. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that one is pretty easy to get lost, though. The door disappeared and stuff. Also, like it was kind of scary. I think that'd be, hmm. Which would be more likely to kill us, I wonder? Hmm. <laughs> now it's I a mean, the session. I mean, the certainly has some... Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, disembodied voice. <laughs> no, it's like, I'm doing a stupid joke. Carry on. Are we going to get eaten by giant beasts, or are we just going to dehydrate? What, what was in what was in this door? A big jungle. Did it have so. sticks and roots? Uh, uh, yeah, I think I noticed some sticks amongst all uh, the trees. I can find stuff in both of these places. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I didn't pretty, go in either. <laughs> there was rain too. Oh yeah, but you had to climb yeah. all of the trees to get up to the rain. The canopy was so thick. Oh. Yeah. The trees were very climbable, though. Mm -hmm. the, the cat did it, no problem. Can we go? She meows. Can we go? Alright. <laughs> He's bouncing. Tekka, can we go? <laughs> Where you wanna go, Tekka? You've successfully dumped Squeak on the floor and inverted him. <laughs> Pekka! <laughs> Jumps on his head. I know no magic. I do not trust the doors, but if you account for their safety, then either one. Oh, where are you trying to go, Tekka? I will need to go to the end of this continent. The northwestern end? The far least. northeastern end? I will not know until I see. Is it more of a forest or more of like an endless nothing? An endless Canyon. nothing. Perhaps more like a tree. Hmm. Well, there's like 12 other doors or something to try. Well, we have two as Professor right? knows exactly what number. Nah, I'll work on the others in, in due time. <laughs> we have seen the place Tekka needs to go in. The dr it's a dream tree, right? Or did only Tekka see that? I'm not sure anymore. I think you're over there. You all yeah, saw we... the village, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was north northwest, but I don't really remember. Maybe it was more I north. I think it was northeast. Take us, uh, to, he knows he has to go to the northeast. Oh. Into well, that case, the part of the map that's not visible to you. This way. In that case, that would be the way...
It would be a very unpleasant journey. But I do have my sun hat. <laughs> and I can make water. Well, I mean, well, there's also a door of endless water and another door where it is raining and... I don't know. Hey, you guys are welcome are welcome to come through here whenever, you know, and uh, all the doors that I have powered up, you can just use them like doors. So even if I'm not around, you can just come through whenever. Okay. There's only one thing to do. It's time to vote. <laughs> so democratic. Just saying, abstaining is not an option. We need to come to a decision. What? Who wrote this? It's like an RPG. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna go there and get attacked by giant sandworms. Technically oh, open world, but in practice, if we take a wrong turn, <laughs> you're dead. <laughs> I didn't write that. Okay, you you arrange yourselves for voting once again. For Taka's sake, I feel like we should go this way. But I also feel like... I'd rather be somewhere where water exists. <laughs> but I can make water. <laughs> you can make it out of nothing? Yes. Well? Let me see what my material component is. Well, and now you can make a... Well, we need a drop, but... <laughs> I have a we different own. spell now. Uh, no material components anymore. Oh, out of nothing. Okay. I heard sand, so... Well, if there's sand over there, we can also destroy water. It will be easier. So you're not just like, don't Wait, mix it up. Tekka, do you even want to go there? Not that we all make this decision. <laughs> you don't Tekka, even want. Oh. Tekka is looking at the ring that Casimir offered. Casimir gave me this with one condition. That we all are kept safe. We have been in a jungle before. We know that better. Okay, well, if Tekka doesn't want to go, then I honestly <laughs> never want to go. <laughs> I can watch the in the forest. Part of me was feeling very level 15, but if we are changing our minds, then okay. What? Can, I, <laughs> wait, can I at least grab some sand first? Okay. But... Yes, we can do that first, but uh, for our actual travels, let's go to the forest first, then. I mean, it shouldn't be too hard, right? I just go in and grab it. I, I, I you know, assume that the sand isn't alive, and like a sandworm or something doesn't come That's up and take off your That's not gonna own. happen. Yes, <laughs> I know it's ridiculous. not going to, but it could. It's I mean, one what of those are the odds the first grab a full a handful of sand like <laughs> He's just talking just to himself farm. leaving. Wait, don't go <laughs> home. Just insane. And so, here I go. Wait, you have the book. <laughs> yeah. It's, like I well, we said, need... nothing's going to happen. This close to the end of an episode? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Talix and Pontevex, you, you've stepped through? If yeah. Talix does, then so does he. What about Brook and Tekka? Tekka oh. stays. Oh god, if they go all inside... She's just waiting okay. for all of us to be through the same door. <laughs> I don't know why god. you're all coming with me. All I have to do is grab this sand. Pip, you see, you see what everyone else saw. Uh, and though it was described to you, seeing it with your own eyes, it's really something else. Um, you, you, you know how big the world is and how little you've seen of it, but right, right now it just feels like you can see so much of it. And you realize that oh. finding the sand, um, the the color you're looking for is red, yes? Yes. The way this canyon is composed, the yellow sand is at the bottom, 
and it gets redder and redder the higher up you go. You are now in the like orangish area. You'd have to climb up to get to where the sand gets red. And based I'm on like, grab some. Based on how high up it is, um, Squeak will need some time to get all the way up there. Okay. Demon. You're just, you're just no, doing just it. <laughs> just, just to annoy him. It was the difference. <laughs> What'd you say? What? When to him? What? What did What? you say? Did you say something? <laughs> I asked if you're doing, if you're just like, waiting around for, for oh, yeah. Squeak to do this. <laughs> okay, Taika, your friends are gone for like minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just picking up some milk. <laughs> oh, 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 to get cigarettes. <laughs> uh, I can't believe you're making me calculate how long it takes Squeak to like, get freaking get up there. It's probably a while. It's all my I, fault. I looked for Squeak instead of Imp in the NT Beyond. I feel like I've made this mistake many times. Flying speed, 40 feet. How high up is this freaking place? He can switch to a raven. That'll be faster. Then it'll be 60, dashing 120. Okay. It would take him about a day. <laughs> What? <laughs> What? How high is this canyon? <laughs> It will take at least five hours. What? 120 second or 120 feet every six seconds and it would take him five hours? He cannot hours? run, fly, <laughs> like dashing consistently. I'm using oh, like traveling speeds. That's really far. Traveling speeds is basically traveling at your base movement speed. Can you go back inside and just make him reappear? <laughs> I, so, I, so. I see Squeak flying that way, and that is a ways. You become smaller and smaller. I'm trying to calculate how high this canyon is. Uh, 180,000 feet. <laughs> <laughs> which is 34 miles tall. Um... Which, uh, which is several hemispheres. That. No, that's that's what it comes to. Oh wait, that's... wait. He's is he going down the canyon? So, so that is uh, four, four Mount Everest on top of each other. Wait, that is six times higher than an airliner travels. <sighs> wait, uh, hold on. Is, is he going down the cliff? He's going up. I was going up. Oh, jeez. Well. Okay, fine. It's going to take less <laughs> than that. Four is for Let me redo the math. Okay. It will be closer to two hours and a half. Right. <clears throat> Would we know that it takes it long? Or are we just waiting? We just see this little dot just making its way up. I mean, you can wait. It's... You can wait around for him. Maybe we should tell Tekka that... Yeah... It's quite hot. Uh... Here, let me put up a tarp at least. Make some shade. <clears throat> We have to do this. You would run like near the edge of the cave, uh, where you can get some some shade and uh, in the, in the comfort that uh, you're not going to like lose sight of where the passage is. Um, I would have gone back inside, by the way. <laughs> just yeah, just feel just feel better. The temperature is definitely better in the in the tower. 
um, this is like, you know, just a couple of short rests. <laughs> and uh, Pippi feel like, <laughs> yeah, it's an extended short rest, and Pippi feel like, by now, surely. Squeak should, we, uh, should be on the way back. And you finally just snap your fingers, and then snap them again. Squeak is drenched in sweat. Oh. And in an absolute rotten mood. He had oh, to he fly to under the sunlight without any shade whatsoever. Oh, buddy. <laughs> just as fast as he could go. Um, just with, like, this handful of sand that, like, he... He, like, throws it at you, and it goes everywhere. And then Squeak. he had, like, a second handful, but... <laughs> I mean, you could have just put it in the pouch as soon as you got it. Shut up. Don't talk to me. I'm going to the beach. See you in a couple days. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> Babe, you have some red sand. Definitely da, 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 baked da, da, da. by Deathly Sun. <laughs> uh, Y'all return inside the tower? Um, those who were already inside wouldn't have, like, turn out just, just downstairs, working on trying to undo the death of Jamiel Fleetfoot. Uh, and the rest of you are ready to step into a much cooler environment. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. You, you walk through this one doorway, uh, the temperature shift definitely more pleasant through here. Uh, and uh, you'll be exploring this jungle next session. Ooh! Ooh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the sound of a jungle. <laughs> Maybe there are ghosts in this jungle. Crazy. This is so exciting. This yeah. is kind of spooky. We just really fast tracked our way into the, the land of the unknown, huh? Ah, so many options. No kidding. I like this hub idea. This helps. Yeah, this is cool. This is really cool. Great session. Woo! Welcome to not the Zasperg Peninsula. Let's wow. go! <laughs> We're rebels now. Hell yeah. Session 41, <laughs> we take our first steps off the peninsula. Nice. All right. You just can't build anything, right? It, True. Does, it, does a tent break that rule, or is a tent okay? Do we know? You cannot, like, leave anything that wasn't there before, and you can't uh, take anything that was there before. Oh, we'll break oh, yeah. that rule a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, just in time for Matt to not be late to his, to his next thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for being with us. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for playing, everyone. Thanks for running it as always. Uh, I'll see you I next week. We'll figure out the next uh, the next time. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Have All a right. good one, guys. I gotta head out. Bye, bye, Matt. Bye, 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 bye. bye.